Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to another episode of the Zero Conditions Podcast. Today, we have a very, 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 how many varies? Like one million now. Very, 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 very powerful guests. Legend. OG. Producer extraordinaire. Musician, ambassador. <laughs> what else? Afrobeat Jigga. Mm. <laughs> Afro Jigga. Shout out to Lady Poe. <laughs> I'm going to take that. You take that, right? I'm going to take that one. <laughs> like that Period. One. Afro Jigga. <laughs> Period. We have the one and only Harmony Samuels in the building. Make some noise. You. Make some noise now. Oh, you, don't, you don't want clap for me again. I don't right? understand. <laughs> you know who this man is. Welcome to our show, Chief. Okay, I almost wanted to ask which person they talk about. Like, do you understand? I thought this person is so old and ready to die. <laughs> <laughs> no, 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 no. I appreciate. You don't, you don't no, have thank to you so be. Much. You don't have to be to be old to have a very healthy resume. You've done. You've done. Incredible things. I appreciate and that. We are not all, just glory, proud of all glory you. to the Father above, yeah. man. We're not just proud of you. We have enough of you, to be honest. Ah. Like, so I'm going to be honest. That's like the, the 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 CV speaks for itself. Amen. And I don't say that very lightly. Like yeah. you deserve this and more, to be honest. Yeah. And the stories have to be told. So we have. It's a privilege to have you on this podcast, sir. Uh, it's a privilege to be have here. You thank been. you, you guys. Been. Thank you for having me. Yeah. You know, so been, on. How's my job been for you? Ah, man. I love Nigeria, man. Yeah. I love it, love it, love it, love it, love yeah. it. I, I actually, the first time I came, which was 2022. Um, Wait, that was the first time? That was here? the first time. 2022? was my first time. Well, that December when I saw you? Yes, sir. No that fucking the first day. day. You can curse, by the way. Yes, sir. I appreciate that. <laughs> <laughs> That's good to know. Uh, that was my first day ever being in this country. Wow. And... Um, it was an overwhelming experience because obviously I'm Nigerian through and through. I was raised Nigerian. I speak Yoruba. I even so speak Ondo a little bit. What? You know what I mean? So. How long am I there? Ah, KTV. <laughs> <laughs> okay, fair enough. Melody, like me, didn't you know that. Like, the first time I met you, I said, You are Nigerian? You said, I'm on, I'm on Yoruba. And I was like, What? <laughs> I was raised I like a real Nigerian in my mother's household. Your name was Olakule. You know what I mean? Even though they, that's what they named me, um, Olakule is what they called me. Yeah. You know? And like me, uh, Melody didn't know that you were Nigerian. She, she thought you were American. No, I'm not even American. I'm British. Exactly. <laughs> First. Oh. Yeah. I was born in London. Yeah. Yeah, I was born in London, raised there. Then, I, but I, you could say I spent half my life in the UK, half my life in America, and now I'm spending half the rest of my life in Africa. So, so where do you live currently? Los Angeles. So you've lived in the UK and you currently live in America. Yes, ma'am. Which do you prefer? Mm, that's a good question. Um, I love London because it culturally gets me, but I love LA because you can. There's so much opportunity. In LA. Yeah. And I find that just America in general. General, when people talk about Afrobeat generally yeah. and the home of Afrobeat yes. away from Nigeria, people give a lot of credit to London hmm. for you know uh, for the exportation of the sound. Yes, but I don't think that people talk about America enough and the role or the impact of Afrobeat in America. And as someone who lives there, tell us about Afrobeat in America. What's the uh, culture like? Um, unfortunately, America is late to the party. <laughs> Um, and I sure. and I say that because I lived there. So yes. um, when we were doing, so for instance, in 2010, I made Kele Kele Love for. Oh, we're gonna get that. <laughs> what was well, Savage, that. right? Mm -hmm. And when I made it, those guys were looking at us like, "What is? What's this?" That it was like it was strange to them. They didn't even understand the dialect between Lamba Yoruba and English. Like it was just confusing to them. Um, but on the flip side of that, they wasn't even receptive to British hip hop, and I was working with Chipmunk at the time. Yeah, yeah. I know. That. And so you have to understand, for me, I was an outsider that was trying to bring 
something to the table that was different from what they already, but they were very regimented. It was hip hop, it was R&B, it was country, it was soul, it was pop, that's it. They don't, they wasn't trying to experiment. Um, they they experimented a little bit with dance music, obviously, because David Guetta in that time. Yeah, pop They were huge yeah. at that time. Like yeah. David Guetta, I mean, it's crazy. Yeah. Um, so it's a lot of boom, 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 And you know, I ran away from London because of that. So <laughs> when I went to LA, I was like, Jesus, they don't find me here again with this song too. And, um, and then my mentor, Rodney Darkchild Jerkins, uh, OG. OG told me, he's like, just do you and the rest will follow. So that's what I did. I just, I just started doing what I felt in my heart. And what I grew up to, you know, uh, my father had a very extensive record collection. So in his record box, right, uh, you know, and the, the amplifiers with the with the yeah. box, right, I would have, you know, Kenny Rogers, Dolly Parton, which is country acts, and then we would have, you know, Wasi or Orlando uh-huh. or, or Ebenezer or, yeah. or Sunny Ade or. Uh, you know, and then on the flip side, it would be Cool in the Gang, Michael Jackson, Marvin Gaye. And I was listening to all of it, all right? The and digesting all of it. And that's how I learned to make music. Like, I was, I was making music before I even knew what I was doing because it was all happening in my mind as a kid. Um, I started playing five instruments by the time I was 12 years old. No mm. so, freaking way. And I never, my parents couldn't afford lessons, so I learned by sight, by ear, and by just emotion. And practice. So, would you say you were born with the music? Yeah, it's a gift. For me, it's a gift. I don't know. There's some people. I believe you could practice anything and be good at it, right? But there's some things are just like, okay, this is a gift. Because yeah, the first time I played drums, I never played drums before, and my whole family were looking at me like, <laughs> I was going to a white garment church at the time. Hey. Oh, that so, makes sense. So, so that's where it began. Um, it was a cellar church at the time. Are you still white garment? No, nah, I'm a born again Christian. Oh, okay. Wait, 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 <laughs> wait, wait, wait. So you? I feel like there's a lot of discovery going on, right? Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. So wait, so you grew up in the white garment church? Yes, ma'am. Cellar. Cellar. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Now you're an adult. You yes. don't attend white garment church. No. You're now born again Christian. Yeah. But. People who attend like Seller be like they're also born again Christians. So you don't think they are born again Christians? Well, the born again culture that I grew up in was very much well, come as you are, right? And wear the clothes you want to okay. wear. And, and, you know, the cultures were similar, but there was a lot of differences. Mm-hmm. You know, they didn't have the, the ashes yeah. and like the mm-hmm. hymns. And there were certain traditional things that happened in white garment churches, yeah. 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 trajectories in which the service went. Yeah. And even just sonically how music was heard yeah. is very different from the Born Again Church that yeah. I grew up in, yeah. which was like New Covenant, Redeemed. Yeah. Okay, 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 okay. You know what I mean? So yeah. the culture changed over, yeah. over time. So uh, okay. it's still the same God we believe in. Yeah. But, yeah. You know. what, what, what led you to move away from white garment culture? Because I personally feel like the greatest artist development regimen in the world, not just in Nigeria, is you the church. Not lying, sir. The church. Yeah. So... What? How and why did you move away from that part? Of I don't. I, me, I didn't choose. Uh, when I was, uh, we we stopped going at the age of like I think we was going from the moment I was born. And I guess I grew up in White Garment Church as long yeah. as I knew. And I think by the age of eight and nine years old, uh, we stopped going to White Garment Church. And then it was interesting because we didn't go to church for like a year or so. Yeah. And then my dad. And my mom just pulled up to this church one day. You know, remember, remember, I just, <laughs> like, pull up. You know, you know we asked it, you know, it was funny because I laughed because we asked questions. It's like, there was a lot of answers we didn't have. We just followed them. Eh? Wow. And uh, the day Jerry, wake up, we're going to church. Okay. <laughs> then you got dressed and you went your mom with your mom to church. You yeah. didn't know where you were pulling up to. I'm yeah. thinking we're going to white garment. Ah, you didn't carry the white garment. Where are we going? We pull up to a church and it was just new. It was kind of like, Sound similar, more English than mm-hmm. Yoruba. Mm-hmm. Music was kind of different. No garment. No garment. Everybody, and then everybody seemed younger. <laughs> Fair enough. So it was kind of like a youth. Yes. Yeah. It kind of became like, my parents were still young at the time as well. They were like mid thirties at the yeah. time. So 
I kind of think they found like a new wave for themselves, and they yeah. was like, "This is where we're going." And, yeah. I, and then I grew up in that culture, yeah. you know. And at that point, when I went to that church. Music was significant to me. At that point, my ears were just like anything yeah. music. So when I went in there, I was like, I'm not going anywhere. Let's finish. What was your first knowledge of when you discovered music? The first knowledge? Um, well, I don't know if I... I was 13 years old when I discovered I wanted to be a music producer. Okay. And... I just transitioned into a new secondary school, and it was called St. Columbus. And when I went to the school, it was like, it was a Catholic school, it was a Catholic white school. So there's not many black boys, and there was definitely not many Nigerians. <laughs> so it was, and you know, a lot of people's like, well, man, you could switch your accent from, it's because I, I grew up in so many cultures. I was fostered for two years, two, three years. So I lived with a white family as a kid, because my oh. parents, wouldn't couldn't take care of me because they were in school and just studying and they were trying to figure out life so that's to give me up for a couple of years Ooh. you know um so they can get themselves together and, shout out to them you know what i mean so shout out to mommy and daddy they yeah. they did an amazing job raising us us four but um 13 years old walked into class and it was like oh you got music class and we never really had music class before that so i was like music class I mean, I love music. <laughs> the only music I was seeing was in church. Yeah. So I walked into music class and there was keyboards everywhere. And I was like, <laughs> now, like and so it's like I'm like I'm obsessed at this point. I'm like, <sighs> and then my music teacher, God bless her soul, Miss Ryan. Um, R.I.P. Miss Ryan. She said, uh, so I would, I just went to the piano and started playing, and she said, who told you how to play? The she just seemed like you played. I played so fluently for her. She was like, "Who's teaching you how to play?" I was like, "Oh, I've never been taught. I just like, hear it and play." And she was like, "So you, you play by ear?" I was like, "I guess so." She was like, "Let me show you something." And she took me into what I we would call a studio, but it was very like basic, basic, basic. I mean, it couldn't be more basic. <laughs> it was a keyboard, a computer screen. It was an Atari 2464. And we used to use floppy disks to yeah. change. I'm showing my age. We used to use floppy disks to change, you know, sounds. So to save your music. Anyway. The fact that I said floppy disk. Floppy disk. Floppy disk. Disk. Bro. <laughs> okay, my dad, see, do you know what floppy disk is? Floppy disk. <laughs> to save one song, ten floppy disk, yeah? Um, and then she, so she was pressing record, and then she was playing an instrument, pressing record, playing an instrument. I looked at the room, and I said, what did you just do there? I said, you could record different instruments and play it back to yourself. She was like, yes. So I'm figuring this out. So I'm like, so it's like your, your own band. She was like, yeah. I was like, ah, can I do that? She said, yeah, try. Or more, from that day on, it's over. I was there morning, noon, and night, to the point where she gave me the key. <laughs> I was in there so much, like I would come home late from school, and I'm like, where have you been? You disappointed. Remember, we didn't have cell phones. Yeah. So yeah. I have to run to a phone box. Mommy, I'm on my way. Oh, I had to do something. To so they were like, ah, why is this boy coming home 6 p.m.? Yeah. School finished at 3.30. I was in the music studio. I was obsessed, bro. And I figured out that I, I just knew I loved making music, right? And yeah. I would, I was like, I, I could hear things. And I was like, I want to try and figure out how to make what I'm hearing, well, you were hearing come to life. Yeah, sounds. I was hearing sounds and ideas and songs because I, I write um, poetry and stuff. And uh, one day, my teacher, so after like nine months, we come to the end of school, and she was like, yo, she's like, can I talk to you? I was like, yeah. She's like, you're in here a lot. She's thinking something socially is happening to me. Mm. Because it's like no kid spends that much yeah. time. Are you avoiding at something like, is they like, so they, she was like, are you being bullied? Yeah. Are you being attacked? That's like me, booty can No, <laughs> fuck up on. I mean, no. <laughs> So if you see where we're from, <laughs> if you see the hood we're in, there's no bullying there. <laughs> These boys here, yeah, yeah. Um, but no, so then I was like, no, I'll play you what I've been doing. So I started playing her all my compositions. And the woman just looked like she saw a ghost. She was like, huh? 13 year old. I, she, she was like, you could be, you're going to be an amazing composer or producer. I said, compo. I don't even know if I can spell it safe. I was like, composer, what's that? She said, you go look it up. 
well, composer and producer is. At the time, I would see people. I just thought they were famous. I didn't know who they were. Yeah. So when I looked up who a uh, producer was, one of the names came up was Quincy Jones. Or G- Quincy Jones. And then I realized Quincy Jones, Jones made Off the Wall, yeah. Thriller, Bad, all my favorite albums. Yeah. And many more, Color Purple yeah. and Discovered, Will Smith and everything else. And I was just like, I want to be him. <laughs> and from 13 years old, there was nothing anybody was going to tell me. I even wrote it down. I'm going to be a great producer. And that's how my journey began. Do you still have where you wrote it down? I still do. Actually, it's funny. A friend of mine, it's always good to have good friends, yeah? Because yeah. a friend of mine, who, sometimes some people believe more than you even believe for mm. yourself. Yeah. Had kept all my plans and ideas on scrap paper. What? He had kept it in a box and he still has it. He, he took a uh, camera footage of it and sent it to me maybe two months ago. And I literally had tears in my eyes because one of them, literally everything I said I was going to do, I did. Shout out to that friend. Yeah. What's this person's name? Are you guys still friends, though? Yep, Dami. Dami? Yeah. Oh. So uh, what does this person get that do? Box, He's, he works in oil. <laughs> oh. <laughs> but we, he, 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 he grew up in money, so he just was one of those kids who um, just had a good heart. Mm. And just like always just would see me play in church and be just like, bro, man, you just different. Hmm. And I'd be like, nah, I'm cool. It's like, I just love music. And then he was like, nah, you're going to be great. And he literally like, still this is very day, just be like, I'm proud of you. He so. must be, because yeah. he saw it from the start. Yeah. Yes, actually. Small boy. Yeah. <laughs> small boy. But when you went to live with the foster parents, how old were you at the time? Uh, I think I was about a year old, and I think I was there until I was like three. Oh. Yeah. Oh, you were just one? Yeah. So you didn't have any consciousness of it? No, I did. That's the craziest part. You'd be surprised what the what a child remembers. But mm. yeah. I just remember being dropped off. And like every once in a while, they'll come pick me up and, you know, get dropped back off. Yeah. This was in London. This was in London, yeah. Are you still close to the foster family? No, I haven't seen them since. I mean, we've moved so many times since then. Then my sister was born, which she's after me. And then my two little brothers was born. And so, you know, life has Better. grown since, you know. Yeah. And, you know, Nigerians are interested. You know, they're not as... All the Nigerians, they, they're not trying to stay connected. No. Like they're, we're trying to move on. Yeah. Are they Nigerians? Who? No, my parents. I'm okay, saying they were just okay. trying to move on. Yeah, like, actually. on to the next thing. Like, okay, we are finished here. Bye-bye. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> they you? They've forgotten you. <laughs> Did you ever leave in Nigeria as a kid? I never. Listen, at the first time I came to Nigeria, I'm telling 2022? you, it was 2022. So most of my life, and the only reason why I haven't been here is because of bad PR. Hmm. Tell us about that. Um, I, I'm going to talk in reverse of it. So when I, my first trip here, at this point, I had done so much studying on Nigeria. I knew more about Nigeria than my own parents. Mm. Like, I was like, Mom, did you know that Nigeria was uh, given to y'all? Give, the name was given <laughs> to y'all by white people? She was like, no. Mm-hmm. Uh, how can they give us the name? I said, oh, Jesus. I said, Mom, do you know what Nigeria means? She said, eh, Nigeria, none. <laughs> So you don't know nothing. And she was like, I said, Ma, did you know you used to drive on the other side, on the right-hand side, and they changed it in, in, to the left in 1970s? And she was like, eh, well, I, I don't remember. <laughs> I'm asking my dad questions. I'm asking uncles. I'm like, y'all don't know nothing about Nigerian history at all. They've never been back for a while. And, it just, and so all I was taught growing up was there's two things. Mm-hmm. I will drop you in Nigeria. One no, eh? With the picture, eh? You can... <laughs> Yeah. So that was one, but that was bad PR. Fair yes, enough. so Two. now you're terrified. Bad PR. So now I'm terrified Yep. as a child. And not just me, a bunch of other kids. Yes. Mm. Then any Nigerian that came from Nigeria, came to London, had bad <laughs> stories too. So they came with bad PR. Mm. So your cousins that came, they were like, like, oh, more, you they live life, fool. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. You don't want to go to that place. You know what I'm saying? So... That was also bad PR. Mm. Then you would hear when uh, your parents are talking because you have, are they'd be like, eh, let us just drop him in Nigeria eh? and go and study Waik or something. Eh? And just be like, they'll just, and they'll brag about, eh, our, our, our Nigerian children. So everything was just, Terrifying. Nigeria was a fucked up place. <laughs> From the airport to the mosque, it's fucked up. 
I don't want to go there. And, and so, who wants to go? Like, I hear you. It's the same reason why a lot of people stopped, didn't go to Jerusalem or yeah, Israel for yeah, a long time yeah. because the PR around those areas yeah. or Afghanistan, like yeah. beautiful places over there, yeah. by the way, yeah. that you'd be like, wow. But the bombs and the war, you'd be like, oh my God, no, they're good. They're bombing, <laughs> yes, <is> bombing. Actually. <laughs> no, they bomb me. <laughs> who bombed person? Like, I'm being, being serious. Who's going to go and do that? Nobody. Nobody. So actually. PR from parents, PR from local Nigerians, PR from the way the government, it just everything in general was like, I'm not going there. There's yeah. no point. Yeah. There was nothing for me yeah. that I wanted to experience because... One, I was raised like one. I mean, I speak fluent yeah. Yoruba. Like, I yeah. read Yoruba. Which is I, very, very interesting. My, I, very I, I, I can understand scary. Elisha. I understand on door. Like, I'm, I'm... You understand very, Elisha? Yeah. You understand on door? Yeah. And you learned all of these from your parents? From my, just being at home with my parents. That's crazy. You know what I mean? That's, that's crazy. But I also think it's my musical gift that kind of makes me learn things. Really yes. Quickly. You know, with okay. sound. Just from very, hearing. Just from hearing. So, okay. um... But what? yeah, so that growing up, so PR, and even my trip here to the first time, I'm sitting in, you know, in the plane, and he, I, I guess he was a older, he was an older man, obviously, mm-hmm. in his 70s, or six, six, yeah, 70s, I would say. And he was talking to me, and I guess he was like, is this your first time here? Mm-hmm. I was like, so I guess he thought I was American. Yeah. So when I started to speak Yoruba to him, just to let him know, I ain't no punk. <laughs> Come try me on the plane, bruv. So, as I was on the plane, yeah, um, so he was like, eh, is this your first time? Yes, sir. He said, ah. so you're Nigerian? Yes, sir. Ah. 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 You don't look Nigerian. I said, I'm Nigerian, sir. What's your name? I told him my name. He said, ah. Okay, well, I don't know your parents. I said, well, uh, Nigeria is a big place. Huh? Like two hundred million people. But but you but at the same time, because I'm Nigerian, I'm Nigerian, so I know what that is. Yeah. Respect your elders. Yeah. Yes. Show love all the time. Yeah. Even if he says dobale, dobale, dobale. Do, whatever he says, just do. If you want to survive this conversation. <laughs> so as he's talking to me, he said, "Well, how long are you here?" I said, "Just one week." He said, "Ah, it's even better." When you finish. Back here, go back. There's nothing in Nigeria for you. Ooh. I said again, another so, one. So I'm like, Daddy, you can't Kilo say that. <laughs> now you have to understand. I'm coming to Nigeria with a whole other mindset. Yeah. I'm coming to Nigeria excited. Yeah. Opportunity, investment, yeah. ways yeah. to improve the country, ways to inspire, motivate. Because I have knowledge that I know I can, you know, in give. Part, yeah. And while I'm on this plane, this, you know. And this, person the, this person who actually has some status clearly because he was very wealthy, yeah. right? Um, I could tell by his watch. I was going to ask how. <laughs> yeah, you know, you can tell a lot by a man's watch. Yep. His watch wasn't yep. all punk. And it wasn't diamond. Though. I just knew that was not a cheap I just watch. Yeah. watch. You know what I'm saying? I so just, I just as he was talking, <laughs> he's talking, <laughs> and I'm just like, okay, he's they're clearly successful, but he just had nothing good positive to say about Nigeria. Nigeria. And in the back of my head, I said, see, that's why there's a disconnect. Because yeah. if your own people are saying, don't come, mm-hmm. why would you go? Okay, so speaking about like the bad PR yeah. and you know, being on the plane with yeah. a Nigerian that was telling you, do not come home, and yeah. you are coming home for the first time, mm-hmm. and now being in Nigeria and repeatedly coming here, mm-hmm. what is your experience, and what would you say is the difference? <sighs> is it bad PR really bad PR, so, or is it real? So, I understand. Mm-hmm. There's two things I understand. It's, you actually, you actually asking me deep questions, <laughs> but I'm glad, because let's have a conversation. Let's have a conversation. So, a couple things I understand is this. Number one, if you were, if you were raised in this type of environment, mm-hmm. I can understand why you would say what you say. Mm-hmm. I was going to say that, right? Because, and you escaped, you managed to get out. They managed to get out. Yeah. Like it's like because like when they took me to Ibadan, and we got lost, so we ended up in like I think it was like a shanty town. Yeah. And it was like these huts that were like yeah. you could fit maybe a person in it, and I was just like I said driver. People live here. He said, "Yes, sir." I said, 
Every day. He said, yes, sir. <laughs> And the sun's going down, so I'm like, there's no street lights, there's nothing. And I'm just like, I can understand the pain yeah. that a person feels. Mm-hmm. Especially when I saw where my parents came from, I was like, oh my God. So if you go out, don't go back. <laughs> <laughs> you always be with your mom. <laughs> oh, oh, you don't want to go back. You don't want to go back. But I think for me, and this is where the church really helped me grow mentally and emotionally mm. Mm. and understand that uh, there's evolution in everything. Yep. Right? 100. This America that we're all bragging about, where we give it, there was a, black people wasn't enjoying that too. Yep. At some point, yeah. Be, yeah. Until the 70s. Okay. Until they started to change yeah. and make change. Yes. Yeah. So, and, prog- and make progress yeah. and stand for things. But education was also... Something. Something. Yep. There was also people who had gone out, traveled, seen the world, and be like, okay, so technology, information, these things. Expertise. Expertise, maturity. Yep. Right? And mindset. A technocracy. Right? If a person's mindset is of a poor mindset, Hmm. you're going to, and you grew up in a poor mindset, it's very difficult to break out of that it mm-hmm. becomes generational mm. so when you say poor mindset um it's the environment you grew up in so okay. you i know kids who are wealthy but they grew up in poor mindsets mm. in a sense of it's not the money it's the fact that you believe you can do things beyond your capability so um so let's break that down um on the poor mindset thing right mm-hmm. i i especially like in nigeria yeah when people have that conversation about poor mindset, it's yes, like sir. it's like how you're referencing poor mindsets in the when you're trying to be a successful person. Like you need mm-hmm. to have the right mindset, right? Mm-hmm. And here in Nigeria, we have some people who are like aspire to perspire people. Mm-hmm. That's what you call them, like motivational speakers. Motivational speakers that they mm-hmm. just come and say, "Oh, for you to succeed, you need to have the right mindset." Yeah. But we're. The, I sometimes struggle. How do you get um, the, the, the different mindset? I, I, I struggle to, I, I find it that when people say that, I just, I'm like, please, that's so, that's so. It's a corny line. Yeah, it's very corny yeah. because it's like, there's people, there are people who have like the right mindset. Yeah. They know what they want to do, but they are but in no the wrong, yes, yeah, they're, right. they're in the wrong environment. That's so right. sometimes when you are trying to talk to such people, yeah. maybe like people who are like underprivileged, the yeah. they don't have the resources that yeah. you have as, as a yeah. successful person. Yeah. It feels very disconnected Degrading. when you're telling them, oh, you need to have the right mindset. But it's like, I live here, you are privileged, so, so you sad. can come back and tell yeah. me about the right That's mindset, so but sad. I don't even have the tools to get out of where I yeah. am, even with the right mindset. So yeah. it's like, how much mindset can you have that can take you out of institutional poverty? Yeah, yeah. And, I, and, and I second you with that because even though I didn't, even though I had better opportunities in the UK that were far much better than yeah. here, mm-hmm. there was a mindset that I had to break. Because you didn't grow up in money as well. Because I didn't grow up in money neither. So I had to break a mindset. Here's what I learned about breaking mindset. Number one, all those motivational speakers are people who go around, are people who, no disrespect, take advantage of the poor by hyping things based on on value of who they are and where they come from, Mm. whatever, and kind of cashing out on Mm. it. A real motivational speaker tells you about mindset but then gives you keys codes and ways to apply those things yep. to adjust your mindset yeah. yep. that's what true motivational speakers do yep. yeah. so not only do they go through something not only do they tell you something but they break down how they got through their process yeah. right and sometimes and they also work on how to help others break their mindsets yep. too by yep. creating opportunities yep. for them yep. right like my little brother over here, like he met me on the internet, 2018. He doesn't know me from a can oh, of paint. Wow. Who's that now? Mackinley. Ooh. And I've been mentoring him for the last six years. Is he a producer? He's just a musical guru. Like he loves music. He's an A&R Ooh. and he's, a, he's got a great ear. How did you meet him? He hit me on Instagram. He texted you on Instagram? Yeah. Randomly. Yeah. How, did you, you, how did you know about his money? So I met Harmony in, in 2018, six years ago. I texted me via Instagram and then I found out that he was the one behind all these uh, you know popular songs that I loved that I had been listening to 
And at the time, I had just started to feed off my feed on feed on feed my curiosity on uh, music producers and music in general. So yeah, it took off from Instagram in 2018. Man, I think I need to. You see, I need to stop. You know, messaging random rich people on Instagram. I need someone to come. I need to. Maybe <laughs> guy your life. You understand? Like I'm well, tired. Here's the thing. I need a rich person to. Here, I'll send you a message on Instagram. <laughs> I will do that. Here's the thing. I'll do that. It's not like I gave him like a million dollars. I just been helping his mindset and just give, encouraging him and, you know, giving Mentor. him keys and ideas. And he's, there's things he's figuring out by himself. Mm. Yeah. But I agree. Having the connection to me drives him to try things. And so every time, so often God's like, do this or help him here or, you know, show him how to move here. But then what that does is, but I'm still allowing him to figure it out. Yes. See, my job isn't to solve your problem. My job is to help you through your problem. Yeah. Right? I agree. And I think the biggest problem in this world is the poor mindset wants someone to fix it. And the, 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 the rich or the, the higher level mindset thinks you got to do better. Yeah. Yeah. And there's nothing in the middle where everybody can sit at a table and have a conversation. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Right. There's no right and there's no wrong. Oh, you no. can't blame someone for the environment they're born in. Oh, no. Yes, right? you can. And, but you also can't put your nose Shame up. Shame them. Because you had the privilege of being born in a, different in a, you know, a white colored environment. Because what I've learned is this. Be careful of the people you laugh at as they... As you're going up. Because when yeah. you're coming down, well, you might have to too. see the same people. I and agree. that's happened to me. I was, I'm a prime example of that. There was a lot of people who laughed at me, clowned me, make jokes about me. Hmm. Friends, cousins, people who was like... Uh, you Dr. Dre. <laughs> you're <laughs> not going to be anything. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like, I get it, man. Like, people who really just didn't oh want me to God. become the thing. And then one day, yeah. they just saw me on television. And they're like, who? With... Chipmunk and Chris Brown, then it was Michelle Williams, then it was, you know, T was Savage, then it was Ariana Grande, Grande, then it was Janet Jackson, then it was just like, wait, wait. what? <laughs> How did you get there? And it, and it was just me changing my mindset. It wasn't like anybody handed me anything. I just refused to take no. For an answer. For an answer. Hmm. That's mindset one. Don't accept no. Hmm. Right. It wasn't any. It wasn't even that. Did someone do? And God always provides. One thing I was, once you start to click in your head, no, right? That I'm not accepting no. It's like God hears that and starts to give you little New way. things that lead yeah. you to things. See, we like I said, if the poor mindset can open themselves up to the journey, yeah, they'll win. Hmm. This is the journey they don't want to experience. Hmm. Oh, God, I've been waiting for... So oh, I just want this thing to switch, change for me now. Ah, I'm stressed, I'm frustrated. So frustration will drive them to a point of giving up. Mm. But instead of understanding that mm. this success thing that we did talking, it's not the success that you're going to enjoy. Mm. It's the journey to it. After I became successful with <laughs> so many billboards and plaques on my wall, I remember one year I had two number one albums. I was depressed. Hmm. What because year was this? 2014. Okay. I was depressed because I realized I'd worked so hard and I still wasn't enjoying my life. So I had to find purpose. That's when I started to put my mind towards where I came from. It's like, there's got to be more than this money and this house and these cars. It's like, after a while, it's just like, this is, is this it? This is hmm. what I've been fighting for. So now I've eaten all the bread. I drink all the drink. So I've been to all the parties. I say money is not enough. Money is not enough. I need to have the money first. But you know, here's you, the thing. <laughs> money, my, there's the thing, and I tell this to everybody. Money is valuable if used in the right way. way. It's also violent if used in the wrong way. way. If I put a gun here, you know, I've owned, you know, in my house in California, I've owned a gun for 10 years. Never used it. I haven't shot it once. It's been in the case. It's been there. Because my mindset is, I don't need to use it. It's there it? for my protection because okay. if I, if an intruder comes in. It. But yeah. my mindset isn't to use it. Now, a non-gun owner can cause damage by finding a gun and yep. shooting 10 people. Yes. Because his mind is in the wrong place. So it's not the tools. It's what we do with the tools. The tools. Money is not the problem. I pray everybody here is successful. The problem Amen. is 
what will you do when you yeah, do have it? When, when people talk about, like, hearing you say that, you know, getting all that money, mm -hmm. getting all of the accolades and, like, the, you know, everything that you wanted to get yes. at the time yes. and not feeling that purpose yes. or, like, not feeling happy, mm -hmm. I find that... By the way, most of these successful people that we they talk about, they're, they, not they're not. They're not happy. At all. I they witness them myself. Not. Most of them. How do you define happiness? Happiness is about doing life well. Hmm. And when I mean doing life well, when you wake up in the morning, every moment that you have is an important moment, hmm. right? We're distracted by so much noise. We are. If it's not our phone, it's our business. If it's not our business, it's family. If it's not family, it's Instagram. If it's not Instagram, it's Twitter. If it's not Twitter, it's TikTok. So much Something noise. is always banging. So you lack appreciation for the life that you have. And what you can't control is time. That's the only thing you can't control. Yep. Time, they pass you. Mm. So now it's like, ah, if only I spend more time. Mm. Money I spent, that's the most valuable thing. Money, no, listen, money can come, money can go. You can be broke today, rich tomorrow, then broke the next day. It's as simple as that. But you know you can't change time. Hmm. It's the only thing you don't have power over. Hmm. Right? So what I learned to, uh, a very successful said, a man said to me, value time over success. When you value time, success will find you. If you chase success, it will run from you and you will lose time. Hmm. As someone who has been around really successful people, yeah, oh, yes. and you know, you can billionaires, come up, scary. Do you understand? <laughs> like, scary. you work with these people, like mm -hmm. you live with these people, and you can come like, guys, these successful people that you will aspire to, like, some of them are not happy. Mm -hmm. Tell me someone that you've met that is super successful and radiates so much happiness, and you're like, oh my god, I just want to be like this person. Ooh. Not for the success, but like the happiness. I don't think I have. I can't say I've met anybody that's super successful that is super happy. Ha. Huh. Let me tell you why I said that. Because problem day everywhere you go. Every level. You see, the problem is this. You can't have money. You know what I realized? Sometimes you have, it's when you get the money, it's when sickness will go reach you. When you are broke, you are fine. Why was you healthy when you were broke? Because you wasn't eating nonsense. Now you're wealthy. You're just putting meat and cheese and bugwares. Now your stomach is paining you. Now you have cancer. Because what happens, to this, the dangers of success is you get comfortable. Have you noticed that when rich people get rich, they get heavy. Mm -hmm. they, don't get, they, don't get, they don't look as healthy. They look rich healthy, but it's bad health because it's like you're eating and you're drinking and you're drinking and eating. You're sleeping, you're not working out, you're not taking like, and you're just, you've become comfortable. You're lazy. Do you understand what I mean? Yeah. I don't have to do it. I'm just going to sleep in longer than you would. Where yeah. before, when you were chasing... 5 30 a.m. 6 a.m. Let me, <laughs> you need gym because if you don't go to gym, you can't stay up. <laughs> Actually. Do you understand Sorry. what I'm saying? So the, 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 the things that are necessary yeah. in your life don't matter no more because so when I became successful it was like God was testing me to see are you really about that life the life or are you going to get comfortable and I got comfortable for about a year when I was like oh okay I'm okay let's so flex like, a little bit and then he just started to show me what happens when you get comfortable hmm. and the greatest of them all like, if you don't, if this Diddy thing hasn't shown you, like, oh, anybody can get it. Hmm. If Epstein didn't, if not shine you, and I'm not even putting him in the same character, I'm just saying, yeah. successful people that have money. If Mr. Uh, President, <laughs> that is a, may go to jail right now, <laughs> Trump, yeah. if it's not showing you, like, anybody can get it, money ain't going to save you, bro. Only God can save you. Hmm. live a clean heart life, right? And when you get success, still live a clean heart life. And then when you are in trouble, still have a clean heart. At the end of the day, it's about the heart. It's not even about, we're going to fail. I failed, I've won. It's not, I'm going to mess up. I'm not perfect. I'll cuss, I'll do whatever. I'll take shots, whatever. I'm still living. 
But when I make decisions, am I doing it because I'm going to hurt someone? Am I doing it for the betterment of that person? Right? And that's the difference. King David in the Bible, don't kill somebody's wife. Or somebody's wife, Hulk, took someone's yeah, wife yeah. And, 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 put, and killed the husband. And God still said it was a man after his own heart. Why? Because it was his heart portion when he found out he did wrong. Hmm. He ran to God to be like, forgive me, my heart, I'm... I'm horrible. I'm trash. Right? You're the only one that can fit me. Where King Saul, he was like, okay, I know I don't mess up here. Just cover me small. <laughs> That's the heart posture, bro. Yeah. You'd rather shame, you'd rather not be shamed and stand in fake posture. And that's what this whole industry is the based on. Humility. Hmm. You know what I'm saying? Wait, wait, wait. The industry is based on what now? Phony imposter syndrome. Wow. Facts. Listen, I'm not. I'm. I'm. I'm not famous. I'm successful. Yeah. I'm inspirational, but I'm not trying to be famous. Hmm. So a lot of people don't understand. A lot of the work I did, people didn't even know I did it. Yes, for a while. For a long time. Facts. Yeah. And in fact, they're only just discovering it from T World all the way down to in I my bed for a Just championed by Chipmunk like <laughs> eight years ago. <laughs> A lot of people no. didn't even, they don't even know it's a Nigerian boy. No. Like, yeah. I, I was with some friends yesterday and they were like, eh, you are the one that did. They didn't even know it's me. And it was like, I've been talking about you for years. And so, but my reason for doing what I'm doing is because I didn't do it to be famous. I did it to try and shift culture the best way I could. Yeah. Because I, I wasn't coming to Nigeria. I was too scared. <laughs> yeah. But at least if I can do what I know. How to do for Nigeria from where I am, then at least I'm succeeding in some sense. I just feel like Sorry. there's just so many no, things. Is getting so no, deep. no, no. Like I feel like there's just <laughs> hey, it went, it just went left. <laughs> it's just like there's so many things that Sorry. I want to say. Yeah. That I want to ask, but it's just so much. Like when we're talking about this, something comes up, we're talking about yeah, that. I know. Please. In the in the conversation where you spoke about, I wanted to talk about mentorship, yes. right? But yeah. now you said something else again. Okay. But I need to say that first. Please. Tonani, someone like like you are like you said, you're not famous. No. You're not you're, you're, you're successful. Yes. You're more you're, successful. You are you're more successful than famous. Yeah. Yeah. And when it comes to like you're not like popular. Yeah. You, people in the music space know of you, but yeah. like the regular man on the stream, I don't know who you are. That's and well. you've done great work. Yeah. You've done important work. Yeah. And we also have those kind of conversations now mm -hmm. where it feels like in the music industry, especially for producers. Oh my God, I know where this is Let's going. talk about it. <laughs> Come on. <laughs> well, I know what's your problem. <laughs> especially for producers, right? Yeah. For a long time, mm -hmm. it took a while for people to start giving producers what they deserve. Credit, yeah. Especially when it comes to money, yeah. you know, signing split. Yeah. Mm -hmm. These guys, producers literally had to fight for these things yeah. before, you know, they got that kind of recognition. They are still not getting, still not getting so, on the yeah. level yeah. that they deserve. Yeah. Sometimes when producers ask for stuff now, maybe their money, somebody be like, how dare you? Yeah. Especially when they work with like popular producers, they be like, a popular artist, they be like, sometimes they don't even get their names on the credits and be like, oh, you should be happy I even paid you that money. Damn. As someone who has been a producer and has worked with international artists, did you have that struggle? No. That's one. So that means over there, they give producers their money. Yeah. Yeah. So it's a Nigerian problem. Yes. Yeah, mostly. It's a, it's a, it's a Nigerian, it's an African industry problem. It's huh. not necessarily just Nigerian. Let's, let's clean that up. Because yeah. I know yeah. other producers in, in Nigeria, Africa, it's even better in certain places. Yeah, like Nigeria, South Africa may places. have got it figured out because yeah, they've they been do. more yeah. industrialized yeah. than most countries. But yeah. it's an African problem because you have society, you don't... So, okay, so here's the problem. When you're not instituted, if it's not industrialized and you don't have... Companies that work in, I mean, they start, they, 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 I mean, they're starting to do it now, right? Yeah. They want to do it now. But if you don't have these infrastructures that are in place, then you can't fight the good fight, hmm. right? In London, I didn't even have to ask you hmm. because I already registered the song myself. Yeah. We all went and we all go and register the song. Yep. Right? So when we register a song, all our names will come up yep. from our own registration. Yep. So if you say something wrong there, in that battle we be, you know, touch money, I know they touch money. Yep. Ooh. So, 
And you don't want that problem. Yeah. You, everybody wants their money. So, oh yeah, which one you want there? And you just keep it. it that's why it's easier. I'm not saying it doesn't happen, but it's easier. Over there. It's cleaner over yeah. there. So I never really experienced... I definitely know producers who have been robbed uh, because they were... The knowledge was lacked. And I feel that's the same thing here. Fear, false evidence appearing as real, is another factor in which producers give up. Yeah, Here's right. it. Let me tell you something. I have been in studios where great artists have come from, to me, uh, superstars have asked me, uh, give me the files. No. Uh, um, uh, one guy was like, we will never work in the city again. I oh, said, try gross. me. Hmm. Try me. And not only did I work in the city again, <laughs> he came back and got some more records. Like, I'm like, I ain't got time for this shit. Like, what are we doing, bro? Yeah. Like, this is music. You came to me for music. I gave you my creative knowledge. I'm helping your career. You're helping mine. Now yeah. you want to just rub me. And you think you're going to see good. But here's the thing. I'm not so afraid of individuals. You could be Hove. You could be Kanye. I'm not scared to be like, nah. It doesn't work. Because I know God's got more for me. Like, there's nothing you're going to... Let me tell you, the one thing I've realized is if you put man on a pedestal, man will put his foot on your head. Yep. Ooh. But if you put God on a pedestal and you make decisions your based on your faith. what you your faith, it doesn't even if the woman, the man take from you, he himself will suffer. He won't sleep well. So you have to do you have to be willing to make decisions and sacrifices for your own honor, for your own glory, for your own regard. It's like, oh my, we're hungry, and that's that's the thing. Poverty and fear work hand in hand. Thank you very much. Yeah. Right? I read, uh, I read a book called Outwitting the Devil, right? By Napoleon Hill. Probably one of the best books. Probably, I went, I've gone through three transitions in my life where I went from, so from one level of success to another. And it's always books that help. This book changed my mindset again from understanding that whatever I accept is my fault, hmm. right? And sometimes I have to take responsibility for the things that are given to me. The devil can only prompt you or offer you things that are not meant for you. If you he can't them. force you to do anything. You he can just he just takes enough information around and then basically offers you something easy. Like Joseph was in, yeah. in the Bible when yeah. Potiphar's wife, wife came and said, "Oh boy." Jack, he didn't fool me, Joe. Oh, that Potiphar so I must be a body shot. He was a babe. And, <laughs> and what did the guy do? He made a decision, which yeah. ended up in jail. But yeah. his... It's, it's it was a bigger his picture. It was and a if, bigger you picture. if you don't know your purpose in life, you will always pick the ladder. Yeah. Hmm. You will never pick your purpose. You will always pick my stomach. Yeah. Stomach Based on fear. So the two biggest weapons that the devil uses... Is fear and poverty. Sadly, there was a producer, I don't want to mention his name, some years ago, and it sort of served as some sort of a cautionary tale to Nigerian producers. Um, you know who it is. <laughs> Just say the story, I don't, I don't know who I don't, it is. I don't want to mention his name. Don't say his um, name, what, what happened? He, he worked with somebody. Famous? He, yeah, the person didn't pay him. About, they didn't pay. That's a typical went out story. and cried about it. And, and they now, blackballed him. So, the concept of blackballing... Mm -hmm. Uh, the way people like to, the way people think it works is someone placed a call to uh, that nobody should work with him. I'm not saying that doesn't happen. It right? does. But in this situation, I don't think anybody placed the call from what I gathered. I think it's more the industry because mm. the person that you fucked with yeah. is so powerful. Yeah, you just people they, now you're, like, you're burnt. nobody else now wants to fuck but with it, you. But, but that's funny. Yeah. But here's the thing about that. Lesson number one. The world is a fucking big place. Yeah. Yeah. Money is money. Currency is currency. This person has to go and beg that guy, by the way. Right? Currency is currency. You might not make it here. You see what NBA players do when yep. they, they don't make it in America? They go overseas. Where do they go? Overseas. Why? Europe. Oh. And Ch China now. Taiwan. Here's the thing about Nigerians. There's no place in the world that I've been to. That you've not seen a Nigerian? That I've not seen a Nigerian there. So there's a way. Hmm. I've been to Alaska and in Niger ah, inside cold. Inside cold, Niger boy. Damn, bro. 
Oh God, why you why you ah you know we just they do education. They also. Ah. So for me, that's not an excuse. Mm. Mm. There's no excuse. It's a long road, it's a tough road. The tougher but it's gonna road. be worth it in the end. Because once you can feed yourself, feed your family, take care of yourself, and make sure that you never had to experience that again, you're fine. You're fine. But you have to be willing to sacrifice and do what's right for you. Yeah. Bible says, love yourself and love your brother as you love yourself. Yeah. So if I don't know how to love myself, how can I, I can love, love you? you? Oh, on the plane, when you get on, your child could be sitting next to you. Yeah. If plane want to go down, what they say? Put the something on who? Yeah, on yourself. Oh, why do they say take care of your neighbor? <laughs> <laughs> so you are number one. If the temple is not being taken care of, then how can you help anybody else? You can't. Decision making is a big part of temple caring. Mm. Because if I can't decide correctly for myself, that means I'm susceptible to manipulation. Yep. By the I'm, devil. I'm open to deterioration. Yep. Yeah. You can steal my purpose. You can steal yeah. my joy. You can yeah. steal my peace. Yeah. That means I am willing to do anything. anything. As someone who like, yeah, it's your faith a lot though. Please go on. Yeah, faith, yeah. You, the, you know the Bible faith. says everything. That's why when people say God not there, I just laugh. I say nah, which no, person, no. You've not which seen person, your head for him. head, look for head. You've not then you go say God not there. The Bible doesn't say so many things, and without those things, you wouldn't even survive. How are we even arguing about this? I, I feel like when it comes to faith, when it comes to people who say that there is no God or just faith generally, mm -hmm. I think that you we can. This is just how I feel. Yeah, go ahead. Even as someone who really believes in God, mm -hmm. I feel like as human beings, we can question a lot of things. Yeah. Especially with the way... I don't even... I don't blame people who question faith. Mm -hmm. I, I don't blame it. people who question if there is a God. Mm -hmm. Because... I do. You do. That's fair. Which is okay. I, I, don't, I don't blame them, sort of, because I feel like for people who are underprivileged, mm -hmm. who feel like, okay, I've spent all my life struggling, yeah. you know, the, some other people are mm -hmm. privileged, they're living a better life, and why do I, why yeah. should I believe? That's right. Do you understand? That's one. Yeah. Then also, as people who have to interface with the kind of, with some of the preachers that we have in mm -hmm. Africa or in Nigeria, mm -hmm. when you hear the kind of things that they say, when you hear the kind of conversations that they have, you're like, is this what God would say? <laughs> Jonathan, like, are you, is this like what your religion, especially when, for people who take, who consume religion from a yeah. leadership perspective, yeah. not, not from knowing God, God by themselves. Yeah, so it's like, you're hearing this person saying this, you're hearing this person saying yeah. that. You, when, these days, when you hear the kind of things that some preachers Church, yeah. say, you're like, this really, as, you're like, this can't be what God says. It's like, we, with the level of poverty that we have in Nigeria, we see mm -hmm. here pastors come and say, why are you giving 10% of your tithes? You are supposed to be giving 40%. You are supposed to bring all your money to church. And you're like, you're not even asking these people how they come to church. Well, here's the thing. Sorry, <laughs> Chief. Before we go, I just want to do a timeout. Um, ladies and gentlemen, you don't thanks for working with us. Yes, no. Fast, fast, sharp, sharp. We are flowing. Mm -hmm. We are flowing. Thanks for working with us for the past one hour. We're about to go on a break now. Um, whatever you miss is going to be out on YouTube on Monday and out on all streaming platforms. In the meantime, the conversation continues. Thanks for rolling with us. This episode was brought to you by Shiva Shrigo. Mm -hmm. So, so, so here's the thing about that, that specific thing. Yes. So when people say, I can understand, I don't understand because have you ever been to the ocean? Mm. You've been to the beach. Of course. Explain that. <laughs> Explain that. Explain why that cloud does not bash me on my head. You know, you know there are different Explain scientific explanations. Explain why for different... a lion knows its territory hmm. and a and shark doesn't come to the town. Doesn't come. Why do you have dominion? Ah, damn, that's a incredible perspective. You can't explain the sky, the animals that live where they live, the monkeys, the gorillas, the lions, because if if we were, you know, there's more rats than there probably are human beings. Yeah. If rats were to know what we knew, it's we wouldn't us. even be here. Yeah. Do you understand what I'm yeah. saying? So God gave us dominion for a purpose. Now, that's where we have to take responsibility. He said, I made man in my image and I gave you, you dominion, dominion, which means if I give you dominion over my power. territory, the power is in your hands. Yeah. Also means you should know better. Means you are responsible. Yep. Right? Oh, yeah, I have a three-year-old, right? 
if I give my three-year-old responsibility of something, it's for him. It's not for me. Now, if he messes up, I now have to deal with the mess up that he created. Exactly like that. But it's him. Yeah. What, you're, what these people are doing is they're blaming God for the decisions of man. Mm. Poor-minded people, unfortunately, blame God because they don't know which man to blame. Which man do you blame? The white man? Well, for certain things. The black man? Well, for certain things. The China man? Well, for certain things. How about we just understand that man is responsible, period. Period. And the only way to change culture is to change law. And the only way to change law is for the people who have the power to change law to change it. Remember I said, now Africa, now American people, it's law they change. Yep. It's why black people can go and buy a house and live in... In Virginia, especially. In Virginia. <laughs> <laughs> Not law, right? So, but it wasn't some government that came together. They don't have a black government. Yeah. It was the people. Sorry, just hold that thought. Um, mm. Welcome back to the show, ladies and gentlemen. Ladies Again, and gentlemen. whatever you've missed, you can catch it on Monday. Ladies on all gentlemen. streaming platforms mm-hmm. and on YouTube <laughs> because the show went on and a lot of things has, have been said. Each one just broke down the importance of God and the importance of mentality and the importance of having the right understanding of what is God's and what is man. So you might want to catch that on the episode when it starts on Monday. I- this episode was still brought to you by Shivers Rigo. Each one is hanging with us, just sipping something nice yeah. something um, little something so you can, nice you can get a bottle too if you want to drink thank yeah. you this is actually sweet thank I have my you own, I own my own tequila but this is actually really good okay, so. okay. that's okay. good can I get a bottle of course everybody okay. gets a bottle thank you. That's, that's, that's the whole reason why anyway that's how I'm okay, okay. <laughs> okay, let, me, let me blow your mind with something yes Please. And when I used to, well, I studied Miles Monroe. That's a very, okay. Miles Monroe okay. was a mentor for yeah. me, a spiritual father for me. Yeah. Uh, we played. You know him personally. Personally, yeah, before he died. So, mm. um, when Moses, and I tell this story all the time, I was like, yo, you love the story of Moses. Let me tell you why. Because there's something significant about the children of Israel and us as Nigerians. Hmm. Something very significant. Almost like, I, I feel see like we are them. Right? Kindred spirits. Their mindset, their power, their strength. The spread. The spread, the way they grow, was so dangerous that the pharaoh was like, I don't like this. this, this, this Same with Hitler. These this, this, this people. <laughs> I beg, slave them before they go overtake yeah. us. Yeah. And I felt like that's kind of how we're looked at. Yeah. Like, there's a fear there with other I cultures. Agree. Yeah. Right? I agree. Like, why are, they, why are they everywhere? If Moses was raised in the house of his mother, what kind of mindset would he have? A slave one. Hmm. So, this is how genius God is. Not only will I save your life, but I will let you be raised in the house of the enemy yeah. so that you, you don't learn have his a, ways. You learn whose ways? The king's way. Yeah. You learn, you're not up, you don't have a poor so mindset. You're a king, you're a leader. You're a king, you're a leader. That's the only way they, they were going to have the conversation. Yeah. Moses could not lead the people as a slave, he had to lead the people as one of them. So when he grew up with the Pharaoh that became Pharaoh, I mean, yeah. they grew up together. Yeah, right? yeah they grew oh, up okay. together. That was his mother's. Did he um, talk mother. to him like. Ah, brother. No. He told him, like, I know you, bro. I know you, fam. You don't even deserve this shit. Like, (laughs) bro, do you understand what I mean? Yeah. Yeah. They were on the same level. Level. That's changing the mindset. That's how you conquer and you change and you shift. Here's another part that no one knows about, about, that doesn't understand. God will give you the experience before he gives you your purpose. 100. Right? Moses, after he left, the kingdom of Egypt was where for 40 years? It was in the desert. The desert for 40 With years. With who? That's where he um, met his wife. Yeah, his wife yeah. And, yeah. When they left Egypt, where were they for 40 years? They were in, um, the on desert. the road to Canaan <laughs> for 40 years. Moses was already prepared. For 40 years. Oh, wow. Okay, so... Wait, wait, wait. wait. Mm. Let us... Did you, did, like, do you understand what I'm saying? So, 
How can I lead if I don't experience? How can I lead if I don't go through it myself? How can I show Mackinde that this is how you move if I don't go through it myself? Yeah. We don't want to go through things, but it's how we change our future. Change lives because other people don't have to go through the same thing. That's mentorship. Yeah. Right? But that's also mindset. Yeah. It's not about me, it's about him. And it's not yeah. about him, it's about the kid after, after him. him. Yes. Because it gets easier. Because it gets easier. Yes, it does. It does. And My I, parents made a way for, for you. me. So you made a way for your kids. So I gotta make kid. a way Other for people. the kid. Like he's not my kid. But you're yeah. making a way for yeah, him. But if I can help him, he's gonna help another more kid. Yes. Because now he has the blueprint. Yeah. Yes, he does. He might just have better knowledge. He might just have better experience. Because now he might just have yeah. better technology. Yeah. He may just have better opportunity. He may just be able to do things. And that's how we shift culture. And that's how you change generations. You change it's literally from one person. I wanted to say two things, right? Number one, people. I firmly, so I'm Christian as well, yes, right? Sir. And the one thing I believe is, number one, your relationship with God has to be personal. Oh. <laughs> Say that again. Your relationship with God has to be personal. It can't 100. be... It can't be what someone is telling you. Yes. You have to go figure it out, figure it out for yourself. Like yes. Like, what it looks like. Yes. It might not work for somebody else. It might else. not be the conventional way. It might not way. be the conventional way, yep. but it's your way, and that's it. Your and, relationship and God gets with God it. is personal. God gets it. God gets it. it. Let me ask you a question. Yeah. Where in the Bible does it tell you? So, God, Jesus, yeah. Holy Spirit. Yeah. Jesus dies... And leaves. Yeah. Leaves us the Holy Spirit. Yeah. Where in the Bible does it tell you how to have a relationship with the Holy Spirit? It does not. So, 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 wait. The so, only way to have a relationship with the, with the Holy Spirit is to have a relationship yeah, with the Holy Spirit. Yeah. But you know Which that. Which means, if I was, I was raised with, I'm the oldest of four. Yeah. My relationship with my dad is not the same as my, relationship, my sister's relationship with my dad. For sure. My little brother's relationship with my dad is not the same as, yep. right? Which means, if... I have a relationship with my father that's different from the other, then my whole relationship with the Holy Spirit and yours is going to be very different. You're going to be closer, I may be further. You may be closer, I may, I may be further. Be he may be leaning on you yeah. he may, because he knows more than I do. Yeah. So when we try to compare, that's where jealousy comes in, that's where envy sets in, and that's why we try to Ah, why is he doing better than me? Yeah. It's not about that. You don't know where he is in his relationship with the Holy Spirit. You don't even know what he has done. We don't even know journey. whether he's being tested. He may fail. Yes. There's so many things I was like, ah, oh, God, why you never give me this one? And then when everything, pafuka, I say, oh, I'm sorry. I get it. I get it. Do you mind, do you mind times I've said, I get, get it. it? So, so, no, when, no, no, sorry, sorry, oh God, so, I'm so going to forget my chin of thought. Sorry. No, okay. no, no, but I, no, I wasn't, I wasn't, no, I'm going to forget my chin but of thought. I'm not going to forget my chin of thought. I'm going to forget my chin of thought. So, wait, now, with everything that you have explained when it comes to like religion and everything, mm -hmm. do you see what, especially how you and Tolani spoke about the Bible, do you see why, like you mentioned that even in the Bible, it does not tell you how to find the Holy Spirit. Do you see why people who are like, coming up Christians yes. might find fault in just following the Bible and listening to of preachers. Of course. Yeah. Because, because, because the Bible does not... Also, I feel like it was written by men. I mean, like human yeah. beings. It was yeah. reciprocated so, by so men. So I don't yeah, even it was think that it was definitely they really might have... By men, we're so. human beings. We have emotions. So I feel like yeah. there are certain things that they might have added to it that might not be what God said. But here's the thing. It's not even about the, the adding Bible. or the taking away. Yeah. Yeah. Here's... I call this... I can write a story, you can write a story, you can yeah. write a story. If you really Stanley think about it, the New can Testament write story. is about five different stories of the same story. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Peter, John, yeah. they're all telling the same story because yeah. they were all there, but yeah. they all told it from different from perspectives. Perspective, yeah. And there so, are different books that form the Bible. It's not all the books. Like the Catholic Bible is different. different yes. Yes. It's all yes. perspective. Yeah. Here's the thing you can't change though. God. God. That's yeah. number one. Yeah. That's why he said, I go leave you with Holy Spirit too, because yeah. all this other thing, I can't give it to you. Yeah. I can't say it's me. But now Holy Spirit is what you're gonna, how you're going to find me. This That's number one. Number two, words. there are codes in the Bible. You see quotes that they use. Yeah. No profession against me yeah. shall prosper. Yeah. Faith without works is dead. Yeah. All these quotes, I call them algebraic equations on how to maneuver in life. Because those codes, when you say faith without works is dead, that means don't be lazy. Yep. You can say, I believe, I believe, and sit in your house till morning tonight. I'm believing now. They said without work, oh. <laughs> which means get up. Get your fuck up. <laughs> right? Get up and go. You know, 
we have to understand that the Bible itself is only a book of reference to help us. Guide. Even, the, even the story. So let me tell you why the, the book itself is about faith. Most of the stories in it that are significant were about things that happen in It's Impossible. God damn, bro. Right? <laughs> Abraham and Sarah. They weren't supposed to have kids at that age. Yeah. Their body wasn't supposed to function at that age. Yeah. But why did God, why was that a significant part of the story? Why did God leave it then? Because he's letting you know that A is in control. That faith takes everything to the finish line. Yeah. But here's the problem. When she got given the word and he got given the word, right? Because we're going to go into another conversation that's deep as well. When he got given the word and she got given the word, she didn't believe, so she made him make a mistake. Hmm. To get that, to get that, which became vibrant. costly. But anything that costs has a lesson to it. Hmm. So he has a baby with a slave, and then God says, "Oh yeah, get them. He's got to go." Yeah. Because now the wife that told him to go and do this something is now upset. Yeah. For the sin that she asked him to do. Yeah. There's a lot of lessons in that. Just that little bit. But here's here's one of the greatest things. The training that he had was when he told. Abraham to get rid of his child, I'm sure it was very difficult yeah. to let his child leave. Yeah. But when the second time came and God said, oh, yeah, get rid of your child, he didn't even ask his wife. He took that child and to because he wasn't yeah. going to make the same mistake. mistake twice. Here's another thing that we need to learn from that mm. story. It's not my responsibility the decisions you make. And it's not your responsibility the decisions I make. Yep. Abraham should have known better to not listen to his wife because he heard from the Holy Spirit himself. Yeah. That's why it's important that each person has a relationship. Because when his wife made the mistake, he followed. But he had to deal with the consequences of the mistake that his wife made. Same with Adam and Eve. God didn't tell Eve, don't eat the apple. He told Adam, don't eat the apple. So it was his responsibility to make sure that he followed what God told him. Yeah. But because he didn't, we all suffered. <laughs> do you see what I'm saying? Yes, I so, do. But, then at the end, but this is why God is so beautiful. He still redeemed them. He still forgave them. Yeah. He still gave them what he promised. Yeah. His word doesn't go unto him in void, right? Mm -hmm. he, Abraham still had the son that God wanted him to have. So God tells Through, you. With the woman that he told him to have. The, so if God says it's blue for you, that's, that's just listen it's to It's proof for you. Yeah, literally. If you now don't believe, that's your wala. Hmm. But when you come back to your senses, it gonna be blue for you. <laughs> God damn, bro. And here's the thing. Here's the thing. Here's the thing. <laughs> he doesn't care about time. If he tell you, say, see, if one thing we have to learn in this life is this. Time, and this is where all you both people don't kill us. They make us move by what? Dear time. Time. Right? You want to know when I realized that I could never be corporate? Where? I was going, I got a job at a bank in West London, and every morning I would pack my bags, pick my bag, put my suit on. And the first couple of days I was just like, ah, I'm wearing suits, I'm going to West End, I'm 17 years old, ah, mommy, look at me, I'm, <laughs> I'm going to be corporate guy. Because I wanted to impress them. Yeah. It's not a problem. Never do things to impress people, hmm. do yours. Do what God gives you. Because when I, I lived my life for 30 plus years trying to impress people, and I almost lost my mind. Mm. Codependency is a bad Nigerian trait. <laughs> Facts. Explain that, please. We go into it. Anyway, when I was at the train station, by the second week, ah, I'm standing at the train station at 7.30 in the morning. I'm yeah. seeing the same motherfucker looking at me. I'm here. Good morning. Good morning. Oh, yeah. I say... Is this what I'm going to do for the rest of my life? <laughs> I bind this <laughs> because I was already depressed. Like I can't do this for the rest. I'm not. I wasn't here to be a robot and just follow machine and just get on train, get off train, get on train, get off train, get on train. Ah, there has to be more than this now. Hmm. Than this seven pound fifty an hour. It was. There's got to be more. Hmm. I didn't get on that train that day. I just said I'm going home. You were seventeen. Seventeen. And I said, I'm going to go pursue my music. That's when I went to the school of music. Wait, so you, you went to the bank instead of doing your A-levels or going to uni? I just finished my A-levels. I okay. was going to 
leave uni for a year. Okay. And, and I got do a, that. And, and work. Because yeah. I just wanted so I like the thing I wanted was I like because I watched my father hustle. I watched I said, I cannot live my life like three this. jobs. Mm. I can't. Yeah. My, I barely saw my dad because he was always at work. Mm. Fuck guru, fuck guru, fuck guru. Walk, 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 walk. He'll wake up in the morning. I used to go with my dad at seven, 5 a.m. to early morning where he'd go and clean some office building. Hmm. And then he'll come back, sleep for four hours. We have to be quiet in the house. Shh, you're already sleeping. Because if you <laughs> wake up, so I'm like, you're yeah. making noise. <laughs> Daddy, I just put plates in the sink. Oh. <laughs> so I saw how frustrated he was, how hmm. upset he was, how hurt he was. Hmm. And then my parents never had the best relationship because they struggled. Hmm. They lived in strife. Hmm. Right? Are they still together? 45 years. God damn, bro. Right? And, and they str- it struggled. So, But all they had was each other. Where are they going to go? Where all they, they had was go? each other. And they got four kids. One with Down syndrome, by the way. Oh. So, you know, there was a lot, of sh- a lot of strain. That's why a lot of people was like, London is not as sexy as we think it is. No, it's, not. it's hard, dude. It's, not. it's definitely not this. But it's hard. It is. And, and, you know, it's a stepping stone to a better life. But, man, if you don't know what you're doing, it's you're just going to find life yourself in not change. poor mindset yeah. again, doing the same, same thing, thing again, no progression. And the little that you gain, that's a little better than here. And then you start hearing crazy stories. So now you're confused. Now you've lived in London 10 years. Now everyone's like, ah, I'm all, we enjoy night out. Mm. Yeah, we got cooker, we have cleaner, we have driver, we have something, we have Bro. this. So now I, I'm I, just, so have, I'm sitting in my London house confused, like, so which one is it? Which one is it? Bad PR. Did you see what I'm saying? It's just people it's talking. It's just confusion. I, I feel like we've, 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 we've spoken so much about so many things. Yeah, like yeah. this conversation like, just went. And I actually think this is the pocket that I was better getting. But because right? I thought we were talking about my career. But, uh, actually, bro, but let, I'm let's, actually excited I love about this. this. Let's this talk is, about the music. Let's no, no, the music. no, no, no. Here's the thing. I actually, I don't care about the music. The music is why I got in the seat. But I really want to. I came here to talk about different things. Life. I hear you. And 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 culture and us as Nigerians and Black Africans across the world, like yeah. we're so discombobulated and disconnected. <laughs> discombobulated. Yeah. You know, I know how. You know, it's frustrating to see. And because I'm so Nigerian living in L.A., I fuck people's heads up because it's like, I can't deceive you because you can hear what I'm saying. Yes. I can't play you because you definitely know our culture. I'm sure they be trying to play you a lot. But then the Americans are like, he know what we're doing over yeah. here. <laughs> then the Brits are like, bro, man, he's, he's one of us. So it's just... I've, I'm very versed and very knowledgeable in a lot. I've yeah. lived in multiple countries. Yeah. Because I was not willing to accept no. I was not going to stand there and just let them say no. And one of the things that hurts my heart is no matter how Nigerian we are in whatever country we're in, there is a disconnect, right? Where we're not all coming home like everybody else goes home. Mm. Like the Asians go home. Mm. The Jews go home. Everything they make money financially goes home. Their industry goes home. They're building their home. They're building their... Even the Lebanese that are out here, they're sending their money home. And I'm just like... In in Jamaica, when I went there, the Indians are over there. Take it. I'm just like, what the fuck going on? Like, why are we... Building there. So segregated. And... I guess that's what breaks my heart the most and makes me want to know more and why I keep coming. Like, I'm coming. I'm not... You're not going to deter me. The bad PR can't deter me no more because now I'm not even walking in what men say. I'm walking in faith. I have a different picture for Nigeria in my head. Hmm. What's the picture? uh, Actually, Africa for me is a one nation thing right now. Fair enough. The United States of Africa is uh, Mm -hmm. what I pray it becomes. It becomes because you have to understand, outside of the Indians, we are the biggest culture. Mm. And as a dollar, as, 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 a, as a currency, as a people that spend and know and affect culture and influence culture and dictate culture and predict culture and fashion and music and finance, like, you don't want that type of power with people. We're strong in sports. We're powerful. We're aggressive. Like, we're smart. You can't, you can't outwit us, bro. Like, the 419 crew was outwit. Like, there's stuff that the 419 crew was doing back in the 90s and 2000s yeah. that they're just starting to do now. And I'm just like, oh, yep. you just get into it now. Where they been doing that, bro? You're late. Yep. 
Oh, too late to go. Ah! Oh, she said Jassy. Oh, she said Jassy. Do you understand what I mean? Hyperians are f- so blessed. Yeah. But yet, yeah, so segregated and so yeah. divided, and it just breaks my heart. And then what? that's what made me do the history, and I was like, yeah. oh, we were divided, and we were kind of smushed together. Like, we weren't a country. We was tribes. And this British guy was like, nah, break a more one and call him land of nigger. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> FYI, that's what Nigeria means, right? Just so now that people Nigeria, understand. Yeah. Like, it's not a joke. When I found out, I asked my mom, I was like, mom, do you know what land Nigeria means? She said, Nigeria, Nigeria ain't yeah. <laughs> No, mom, it means land of nigger. She said, don't we, God forbid, they will never be. <laughs> it's like, what is God forbidding? It's a fact. I can show you the documentaries, the books. <laughs> and they actually sold it. The statue. Yeah. And one of the companies that sold it is still a company in Nigeria. Do you understand? Nigel Port. I get it. Like, I get it. Listen, when I learned and I did my research, and that's what I want the youngsters to do. Know your history. Find out about your country. Know more about it so that you're triggered, so that you're inspired, so that you're motivated, so that you're like, I don't want to accept this. Like, I'm not going to accept. And you know what's funny? I was watching this Prince Harry thing coming over to Nigeria yeah. and the scrutiny they were getting for coming here. And once again, the comments on Instagram were so divided on Twitter because it's like, hey, are they lying about Nigeria? I said, why would you even agree with them hmm. when they're the cause? Hmm. At least 50% of it. They come here, take, 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 then sell back to you higher than and what they took. Sick, eh? You know what I'm saying? And then we don't hold them accountable for anything out of fear that if we hold them accountable, they, might not give it again. they will never give it to us again. But uh, if they stop giving to us, can we, uh, have we, can we built, our own wealth? Have we built ourselves enough to stand on our Here's own? The thing. Do we even want to stand faith on our own? Faith without works is dead. There you go. So there we go. So we're not walking in faith, we're walking in fear. So now we're hypocrites. See, now, now God is just looking at us like this. Eh, when you're ready. How are you supposed to trigger him to help us if you don't make the move? Did the children of Israel wait or did they move before they got to promised land? No, they moved. Oh. Yeah, they moved. Do you want to know why we have the, why everybody, the diaspora has to come back? Hmm. Why? Why didn't God destroy Egypt and give it to Israel? Hmm. Why didn't he? Because he wanted to take them to a better place. Because he didn't want them to be infected by their culture. Mm. So for us, we have to come home to give the knowledge that we have learned from the house. And that's what built Afrobeats, to be honest. A lot of, of course. A lot of IGGV culture, people that mm-hmm. came back. I mean, the hmm? m- like modern Nigerian music, yes. Mm-hmm. All the m- all the major labels, IGGV, Kenny's music, Storm yeah. Records, yeah. Maven, yeah. all of them. They all brought the diaspora. Is, event companies. If you look at it, Don't just like JGB. Yes. Yeah. Oh yeah. The Don. Yeah, that but guy, he, man. but he, no, 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 no. But he grew up in Nigeria. Then he traveled. Boy, still IGGB. Like and then he came back. Boy, he was there for like eight, nine years. Uh, I would. Well, it's yeah. Still IGGB. It, 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 it's once IGGB you start going still. past seven years, it's it changes, right? Because you, you adapt to the culture. Like, there's, there's, there's no way about it. Like, if you go to America and you're there for 10 years, everything about your demeanor is going to change. Yep. Yeah, because you're going to pick up on some of You're going to pick up, like, the shoes, the clothes, yeah, the, the food. The way they speak. You know what I'm saying? You'll be doing vegan, you'll be doing all kinds of stuff. Vegan bawo. I'm telling you, you'll be surprised. Oh, Teddy J, Jalof Rice, I think we're going to eat none of You're not going to eat none of that stuff, bro. Yeah. You understand what I'm saying? It's going to be, your culture's going to change, so you need to be able to come back and it's yeah. necessary to come to back. To come back, Do you yeah. understand what I'm saying? Yeah, it's scary. This is but a promised land. I promise you. Let me <sighs> tell you why. It's a promised land not because there's, there's things that grow here organically yeah. that you can't find there. Yeah. It's a if you it's pick a it, you come back. If you pick it again, you come back. If you pick it again, you come back. Ah, ah. The resources in this land is crazy. But the poverty, though. Yeah, but, it's but that, again, that, once again, again, is it to the poverty? Like, you know, uh, Orlando Brown said, "How are you selling me apple that is free?" <laughs> Do you see what I'm saying? Man understands the significance of power. Hmm. 
Apple that you can just go and pick from a tree. Mm. I have to go and spend money to buy it. She it makes sense. <laughs> Do you understand? We make decisions to stay poor. We make decisions, unfortunately, mm. to allow certain people to do. It's not that it's our fault. It's just that time, they have taken authority and dominion. Those who understood what it meant to take dominion, and they took dominion over the land, over the animals, and over people. <laughs> he didn't say... Good or bad. He didn't say good people get dominion, bad people get dominion. No, he said gave man dominion. It just depends on who you are. Do you want it? it who you want to be. Remember I said heart posture is everything. You put a good man in the seat, good things happen. You put a wicked man in the seat, wicked, wicked things, things happen. happen. The Pharaoh that was there before the Pharaoh wasn't, just, wasn't, wasn't the wicked. Guys, was they lived person. together in harmony, yeah. Egyptians and Israelites, yeah. for a long time yeah. because of, 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 of Joseph, yeah. right? Yeah, they didn't, they didn't just enslave him. It yeah. was a wicked man that was like, I don't like this. I don't like this. this, this piece. Oh, so what That's am I talking right. about now? Uh -uh. So, so I definitely agree that when it comes to like Africa, when it comes to Nigeria, a lot of it rests on like the kind of leaders that we put in place and the kind mindset. of, and also the mindset. And, like, the mindset will determine if we're selecting the right leaders. Not necessarily mindset and poverty. People are poor. I, I, I feel like when yeah, we're right talking mindset. about... Yeah. These things we forget that part. Yes. We forget that part because people are poor. People and, are really poor, and, and, I, and it's I not gonna. It's not gonna be. It's not gonna be poor people that fix that problem. It's gonna be leaders that fix that it's problem. The leaders that fix the but problem. How poor people can help voting themselves is by those in the middle area. You see, people like us. There's a lot more of us than you think. How many people like us? I'm not in the same level with you, please. No, you are. I'm not, please. <laughs> Whatever you are saying, I'm, you're, I'm me and well, you're not, okay. you are my helper. <laughs> I'm not, don't put me and you together. My point, I beg my you. point is that you have access to things that a lot I of people you. can't have. Yes, right? I agree. We have to be willing so fight to the think fight. of the bigger picture, man. Yeah. We can't turn a blind eye. <laughs> as long as they don't bother me, you. Uh, as long as I have roof over my head, though. as long as I can pay my bills, yeah. let me just put my own something there. Mm. We can't keep being thieves. <laughs> we can't be keep being thieves in the night. <laughs> because, <laughs> you know, because you, here's the thing that people don't really understand. God go judge you. Yeah. He go judge you when you get to the gate now. Now, heaven that we want to go. You know the first thing someone said, stop trying to, stop trying to impress God to get to heaven. Hmm. Live right and you get to heaven. Hmm. All this impressive, impressive, ah, I'm praying morning, noon, and night. Oh, more, you can wake up and say, God, I love you. Thank you for today. And he's happy because you have a relationship, a genuine one. But, ah, <laughs> Right? And you're doing the most in life. And you're walking around, 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 around with the Bible in your hand. I'm and you I'm think you're guy. going to heaven. It don't work like that. God don't work like that. How you can't that? manipulate him. I don't you like can't that. buy your way to heaven. I don't like that. Everything about prayer is a relationship with God. Yep. There are days where I get up and I'm fighting in the spirit. Hmm. And there are days where I'm quiet. Ben no song, shut up. Let him talk to you. How can God talk to you if you're talking? Always talking. Do it for me. 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 Fix it. Fix it. Fix it. He walk go fix our are Sit down. Ben song. Shut up. Oh, shut your mouth. And then maybe, because you know how many times in silence, real talk. No, I'm, yes. I'm making jokes right yeah. now. There's been, I've been able to make better decisions, figure problems out in silence. Yep. Because when you're quiet enough, and you quiet the noise, firstly in your brain. Yeah. And you quiet the fear in your heart. Yeah. And you get to a place where it's almost like meditation. God will reach you there. God damn. And then he will tell you something that you'll be like, ah. Hmm. No. And then he will confirm it to you. Do you know how many someone will call me and be like, yo, man, I just felt like to tell you. And it's exactly what God had told me. That's when I go and do my work. Now, if I don't do the work, is that God's fault? No. Oh. No, it's not. And that's where we're not being honest. I, if we lined everybody up, are you really doing the work? Eh? I, oh, I, are you doing the work? Are you doing the wrong work? That's another problem. Eh? You think you're, you, you, you are doing the right things. But you, you think, think you're doing yeah. the right thing, but the system got you by a chokehold. Yeah. 
So that's another problem. Make sure, because the Holy Spirit doesn't misdirect you. Hmm. God no misdirect you. Hmm. Sometimes when everybody's going right, he go tell you to go left. Hmm. And that's fine. Right? Sometimes when everybody looks like, ah, you're doing, it, it looks good for everybody. It's not to... There are some things that have been happening recently. I was like, oh, God. I don't quite understand this. <laughs> Do you understand? Of course. I'm, I'm saying... Koyemi, because mm. does that make sense? But I'm also having to realize, like, there's just something at the back of my mind that's making me realize that God, God doesn't lie. That's yeah. the yeah. only thing that allows me to to stay on top. But let's talk about the music part. Mm-hmm. So A levels, you went back into the, into the production. What was the first big break? Chipmunk champion. Really? Yeah. Took me ten years. So for, for from, from that train station. It, it took yeah. me 10 years. To make that? To get to that. I was making great records yeah, the whole time. Yeah, I know. Everybody just was like, no. No. How did, you, how did you make that one and how did you make it? Well, the song is significant. So, once again, there's things I try to drop in people's, eye, in people's minds. Um, always be nice to everybody. Respect everybody. Love everybody if you can. I'm not saying be mumu and get yourself mm-hmm, beaten. Mm-hmm. But at least acknowledge people. Make sure you see them, they see you. So I was going through a transition myself in my life where I was like, there was like something in my brain switched and I was like, I'm leaving London, I'm out. And it is like, when I get determined, relationships, people, friendships change because I start limiting who can be in my ear. Yeah. So at that time, hmm. I was in Tottenham and I was going to the KFC and I would, you know, I, I remember walking by myself to the KFC and I was leaving the studio and Chipmunk was in the KFC. As a kid. As a kid. He had just broke with his, uh, with his new record at that time. I remember the record. And something just said, say hello to him. Because, hmm. you know, in London, it's the street, so it's just like, nah, I'm not trying to. But I was like, well, go on, fam. And he was like, well, go on, you good, yeah? And then he walked out and that was it. That was it. One year to that day, I go in the studio, and someone's like, you want to work with Chip? I was like, yeah. I said, I remember seeing him in the t-. I was like, cool. And it was my little cousin at the time called Tale, Tale Riley. I'm on Niger. Oh. Um, yeah, it's a little the cousin. artist. Yes. Scripps. That's your cousin. Yeah, it's our cousin. That's crazy. So Tale was like, do you want to go in with I was like, yeah, let's go in, because he was writing for him. Chip walks in and was like, oh, my days. I, I saw you at the, the KFC. He said, ah, oh, this was meant to be. Hmm. And that's how life changed. So he said, my next album, do you mind producing it? And I said, me? I said, Damn. yeah. And this was at the time you were crossing over. So, and at this point, I'm packing my bags to leave. Hmm. Because, and I'm not packing to go somewhere. I'm just yeah. packing because I just like, I can't do London no more. Because yeah. the politics was there. It was crazy. So I get to LA and I'm talking to Rodney Jerkins. I'm like, Rodney. UK rap. Nah, ain't nobody trying to hear no UK rapper, man. <laughs> uh, talking to different executives. And I'm, it's like grime, innit? You guys do grime. And I'm just like, the disrespect was just there. Yeah. Mind you, a lot of the grime artists were Nigerians. So yeah. I'm laughing because me, Skepta, we was yeah. in the same studio yeah. complex for like four years. Yeah. So as I'm working, the stress and frustration of like leaving London trying to make it in America and just like in this lost place of like, am I going to make it? I started making this track in my car. Like I had these portable headphones and, and I was, it, that's why it sounds so like aggressive. It's just like pain. <laughs> my heart that was just bending me. It's just bending me, right? So I was, the, the track was built on like the pain of like I'm it gonna the make track. it. Could have never. Uh, yeah. Could have never this, yeah, I was gonna a, make yeah. it. And Eric Bellinger was writing yeah. the song. It was a good friend of mine. We were, writing, we were writing. We were both broke trying OG. to figure it out. Right. Mm. Eric Bellinger. We were both broke at the time, trying to figure it out. And we're in the studio, and I played him the track, and he was like, "Yo, I got something for that." And he went in the booth and sang. Some people I have to learn. I was born a champion. Yeah. So we played it to Chip. Chip flew in. 
and he said, "Oh, oh you were in the U.S. at the time." I was time. in L.A. Yeah, he had moved at the time. Yeah, and Chip was like, "I don't like it." I said, "Chip, don't." I said, "Please now." And I'm looking at Eric like, eh, "What's going on?" What's going on? I don't know. And then he just didn't. He said he didn't want the song. So there was something we changed that made it very positive. He just didn't want to sound like an angry black kid that was mad at the world, mm. right? Well, you were mad, so. So I, <laughs> I was very mad. He's already so he, his, but his rally was some similar, but he had a, he had been successful at the time. Yeah. So when we made the changes to it. That's when he, he was like, it. yeah. And we jumped on it. So here's the thing. While I'm working on that record, there was another record that I had done for this little 12-year-old boy that no one knew. And it turns out Chris Brown was mentoring the kid. Oh. Ooh. So when I went to the video shoot, just sitting down, Chris Brown is like, yo, this song is crazy. Who produced this? And he was, I was like. I did. Me. Me, I'm looking at him like, I'm a Chris Brown. Yeah. He said, he walked up, sat next to me. He was like, bro, we got to work, man. And then I told him I was from London. He said, are you from London? I love London. I'm trying to get over there. But unfortunately, he was banned because of the whole yeah, situation. Yeah, situation. Right so that's when it clicked in my head, like. Bring the London boy to him. If we can bring the London, <laughs> if we can help the man get to London, let's help. Wow, what a better way to do it with a collaboration. Yeah. And it was the first song. He heard it. He loved it. Jumped on it. He wrote his verse. I was in the studio watching him. I didn't tell Chipmunk at the time. So I'm in the studio watching Chris Brown sing this song. I was like, I hear me. <laughs> What's the law? What's the law? It's happening. Faith without works. I'm working. I'm working. It is working. I miss your chill. It's working. Well, church the next morning I was in church. What the like, God, please. I laid on the floor. Joe, please, let it be. <laughs> Bruv, and you know, you're on nerves because it's like, is it going to happen? It's not going to yes. happen. Yes. And, uh, I called Chip, and, and while he was, I said, listen to this. He said, yo, fam, who's that? I said, Chris Brown. He said, no way. i see you tomorrow. <laughs> <laughs> what? He got on a plane. Um, and when it came out, the world shifted. No, the world shifted. The world, world because shifted, time, especially like... for us as the Brit. Co- I'm telling you, yeah. I watched people yeah. who made fun of me see that video, because yeah. I'm mm. standing next to Skepta right yeah. now, and going, eh? Yeah, my brother was sent me a screenshot. <laughs> I read comments like, "No way, this is, can't be happening." Is because we knew, I knew deep down, shift happened. I knew. I said the shift is gonna. This is gonna make other young kids, hmm. young producers, young rappers believe they can do anything they can. Chip also brought Red Skepta. He brought them all to yeah. LA at yeah. the time too, because no one was going. Who's going to LA? Yeah. From our, nobody was going to LA. So when we started all coming out there, they, we, I was out there and I, the, everyone was coming over there. Stormzy came, like people were coming to the studio. Yeah. And that's when the shift happened. And I yeah. said, and now when I see it, I just laugh because I'm like, they don't know that people have been, you know, on the shoulders Plug of in. giants. You'll see yeah. far, like, they don't know that, you know, me, Estelle, and, you know, me, Chip, Shout Estelle, Estelle mm. you know, Tiny Maj- Temper. Yeah, you know I mean, Craig Def- been doing these things yeah. to help shift the culture, right? Yeah. So that we're accepted in their market. Not mm. accepted in our market, in, in their, their market. market. Why? Because it's easy to just accept us in our market. Yeah. It's easy. Dread to be successful. Right? It's anyway. easy because you're going to eat from our our currency. We want to eat from yours. Okay. Because it's a bigger market. It's a bigger market. Yeah. It's like 350 million people. And it, that are financially spending money. Yeah. Here's what messed up. This is when I said, and I predicted this all. Yeah. I said, what's streaming? Well, this is before streaming made sense. Yeah. I said, what is streaming? It's like, when you go on your phone, I said, hey, whoa. <laughs> me, I Google them. Me, I go, men lie, women lie, numbers don't. Don't lie. My boss says that all the time. Here's what I did. I Googled. I said, how many people in Africa? 1.5 billion people. How many people in India? I be with America, he shift not come. Yeah. Because if it's based on this, on the cell phone, we all got one of those. Yep. Yeah. It's not based on how many pieces of like all the songs product in is in a your place. Pockets. Right. So America was good because they were, they could put a million records in, your in a store. Yeah. Right? You can't do that with streaming. Yeah. So that's why you start to see a rise 
in, sh in African artists because now the internet's breaking all the rules. Yeah. Yep. <laughs> right? Democratic and now revolution. you're looking at Ricardo Banks with 8 million people following him and you're yeah. like, where did 8 million people come from? Well, the 1.5 billion people that he's yep. in currency and America don't even know him yet. Yeah. I, every time I show an Afrobeat artist, they'll be like, wow, he got a big following. Mm -hmm. so They're always so surprised. Like, because it's they funny. don't understand how loyal the yeah. the, our, our, yeah. our we are. Yeah. So there is power in it. And I know for a fact that not only is there power in it, I know for a fact that we can make a shift once everybody puts their mind is Because look at that. How oh, eight million people following one person that the rest of the world doesn't know. Yes. That's crazy. I That's agree. the power right That's there. Incredible. That's currency, bro. I agree. Because you know what? When they see that, it's like, yeah, 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 let's... Let's let's sit with him. Let's, you know what I mean. Like, yeah. oh, let's do the feature. Let's because for them, if he's got eight million, I only got two. Two million is still a lot. But that's a lot, though. Ah, it's a lot. <laughs> but eight to two, it's still. We, a lot. we even have some. Like, we have some. If like, you have five hundred thousand, it's still a lot. Well, eight mi if I, if I'm an artist and I've got two, and you're an artist, you got eight, eight million. It's like valuable. You're actually me. yes, yeah. I agree. I agree. In this digital, in this yes. digital space, yeah, yeah. Yeah. that's when I knew the shift was going to happen. So I wasn't very surprised when my Afrobeat giants kicked down the door and not only support, like they're doing arenas and rappers can't even get. Yep, right yes, now. Yes, they can't even get right the now. Biggest rappers rappers are can't, can't sell, sell out shows. The biggest. Because Afrobeat artists are doing that. Because now our support, our, our people, the numbers are, be, are, yeah. are being Again. shown. So it Israeli. lets you know, right? Do you know what I'm saying? It lets you know. And the diaspora yeah. and in Africa. It's huge. It's huge. Yeah. And so now everybody's like, well, let's look at this ever movie. Which is a product of the fact that Nigeria is, is not a great country. That's but people are leaving. leaving. Yeah. That's why. That's why People are leaving. and strong. Yeah. So part of what, when God is setting something up to work in a certain way, mm -hmm. you don't know. Here's the thing. that yeah. we, Here's my prediction for the future. Uh, after a while, people are gonna get bored oh. of seeing y'all doing so well in their territory. Oh, absolutely. So they're gonna tell you to go home. Hmm. Yeah. You'll see, and you're gonna be like, "We talked about it." After a while, people are gonna be like, "You know, we don't really." They've just removed. Remember when uh, that guy got murdered by the police guy? Yeah. They put this mandatory thing where everybody has to. You know, have some kind of black culture and divert and the yeah, yeah. department in, uh, the, what in corporate called, uh, America, right? Yeah, yeah. The, They've gotten uh, rid of the, all those laws now. That's G ended. GI or something. Yeah. So, it was, something. so it was initial gra gra. Yeah. So because obviously that caused such a commotion. Yeah. In the earth. So now they don't have to hire you if you're black. They yeah. don't have to have a black person in in their yeah. In yeah. The quota system. In their in their quota. So now it's based on what they feel. Representation. And so. You already can. I'm already gonna see the regression right now. Like the industry right now, most a lot of people got fired in America, mm -hmm. yeah. and most of them were African American, African American. Yeah. So, so yes. basically, um, as someone who has you've produced for, you know, pop stars, yeah. you've produced for Afrobeat artists, yeah. you've produced for rappers, you've yeah. worked with everybody. Do you understand? Your catalog is like long, yeah. right? Now. I want to talk about that, like your catalog, like the, the length of that catalog, right? Mm -hmm. <laughs> when people, when we have, we have artists, we know producers that don't, that, are, that don't necessarily have the kind of catalog that you have, mm -hmm. that have more visibility, like people talk about them, like they do so much PR. Mm -hmm. How do you reconcile having the talent and doing the PR? Because was it an intentional thing for you to take the back seats? Let's talk about your catalog. Let's talk about, yeah. imagine you're working with Chris Brown. Mm -hmm. You've worked with T.W. Savage. Grande. You've worked with Arena Granny. You've worked with, yeah. you know. Janet. Like, you've literally worked with a Everybody. lot, like legends, yeah. right? Yeah. People would do that, and I know like the kind of PR would be like, oh my God, they're in the front of everybody having that conversation. <laughs> Which you hit? It was deliberate. What? Which you hit. But you just do the work. Did you deliberately take the back seat? Yeah. Why? Because I just, I like my piece. I told you, I don't want to be, I didn't come in this business to be famous. I came in this business to be great and to do great things. And by that works, you'll see, you, you'll know. Right? So you're a body, body works guy? Yeah, I'm by the work. Like, I'm fruitful. I'm successful. I don't. It's not who you are. It's not. I don't need the fame to justify me. Um, 
And so I did literally took the back seat. I, I wanted to be like Clive Davis and Jimmy Iovine, where it crashed, wasn't Clive so Davis much about Clive me, Davis. but the artists that we yeah. worked on and developed and, and we oh, made, geez, and, and we utilized their talents to do greater things on the earth, yeah. right? And we wanted to shift. Because for me, it was like, I want to be able to walk outside and go to my store, go to the store and buy me a lemonade. And I want to take my kids out and have, you know what I mean? Like, I, w I wasn't concerned with the glitz and glams because the problem with that is this there's no peace sometimes hmm. right i watch my famous friends you know i sat down at dinner in beverly hills and yo get up run 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 i'm like why are we running for tmz's coming down the street you know what i mean so it's not peaceful you know it's not always sexy so for me witnessing it firsthand i was just like no nah, i'm just gonna you don't right do here. this <clears throat> and i also liked focusing that focusing on seeing growth i'm you know I love building things from ground. I build my house from ground. I build my studio from ground. I build my career from the ground up. So mm. building from the ground up is necessary for me. So when you're a builder, you're not concerned about owning it. You're more concerned about building it so and watching it other people it. utilize yeah. what you built. But does that put you at a disadvantage? No. Money is money. <laughs> <laughs> but some, some people think that the money comes from the noise. The money doesn't come from the night. It does for some people, but that's why they don't get peace of mind. I know rich, I know rich men that you will never ever know is rich. They'll walk yep. in there yep. and they look broke. But they're rich, rich. And they will buy you and me and everybody else. You are your faves. And, you're, and I'm talking black men, white men, Asian yeah. men. Like, it's not about noise. It's about knowing what you're doing. And just right? making money. And, 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 and making money, but making, making your money make money for you. That's all it is that these guys are. Make money make money. Yeah, so when the moment you make money, like, <clears throat> what are you spending your money on? Like, yep. Kanye West said it the best. We're spending before we get it. Yep. If I tell you, if I tell someone, like, oh, well, I'm going to give you... A hundred thousand dollars. They already spent it. Yeah. So um, before I, they even get it, oh, well, I go put twenty thousand here. I go eat this one here. I, I go. I go put this. I go put like they've already spent it, right? Where someone with the intelligence and the know-how would probably not spend all of it. And probably yeah. spend five percent of it yeah. mm -hmm. and do something else. Where it's like this hundred gonna be three hundred. and This three hundred gonna be five hundred. How did you meet? Savage. Well, and, and that's once again, God bless the diaspora for that because that I moved to, when I moved to LA, I met her in LA. Not even in the and, UK. Uh, uh, Not even in the UK. No, nah, I didn't even know she existed. So when I got to LA, everybody, you know, like I said, you can tell I'm Nigerian when I'm there because I don't hide it. You know, I'm proud of it, mm. of it regardless of the, <laughs> the... Bad PR. The bad PR. I'm proud of it. And so... Um, I walked with pride and they was like, yo, man, you got to, my friend TK, who's also Nigerian, was like, we go, you got to meet Tiwa, man. Like, you guys, she's, she writes, she's an amazing songstress. You got to meet her. And I was like, where's she from? She said, London. I said, London? And she's out here. So I'm confused because I'm like, I don't see this baby. So I meet her and we become family immediately. Like, it was just, and so we start working on, I didn't know she was an artist though. I just thought she was a songwriter. But we start working on a few different things. Um, and, you know, super, super grateful for the things we worked on. Fantasia, yeah. you know, Kelly Rowland. We were writing songs for everybody that was oh, in the you, industry. You, you produced the song that she wrote for Fantasia. Yeah. Something, something, Cornbread. Yeah. Oh. And we did another song. We did a bunch of songs together. And, like, we would just do songs and then she'll place it or I'll place it or our friends, would, our managers will place it. And... But she always had this idea in her head. She was like, Harms, I got this idea. I'm going to go back to Nigeria. I said, for what? Bad PR again. Me. <laughs> I joined them. I joined my gang. I was definitely doing bad gang over there. I said, for what? There's no industry there. I've got to try it. And she says, hey, you know, I'm going to go to Nigeria because there's no space here. That's in LA now. Yeah. And in retrospect, I mean, it was packed full of female vocalists. Like, And then you... Don't sell your culture to a culture that doesn't understand it. You sell your culture to your culture. All she did was utilize the tools that was at her hands. One of those was me. I was a, I'm, I'm a, 
R and B pop producer, yeah. Yeah. Nigerian who's succeeding. Yeah. So there was tools and skill sets I had. I had a plush studio. I had equipment. So she was like. All them sounds there, what did they use for these people that you use for Chris Brown? Yeah. Use, use it for me. Use them for me and make Afro beats. So I said, ah, okay, no problem. First song I made. As soon as I put my MPC on, I switch on my computer. No, wait, but before T were Savage, before Kelly Kelly Love, did you have you ever made an Afro beat record? Yeah, before? yeah, I've been making Afro beat records for years. Cause we was into Two Face, African Queen, and we was we all were proud of the success he had. He, you and know, Dibange. he had Dibange. We they, these were our guys. Like they were the guys we looked to and we used as our blueprint to walk in faith. And so, what I knew was because I me I'm not the loud guy that's I'm gonna do this. I just was like every opportunity I have hmm. to show the Nigerian flag, I'ma show it. So T was one. We did Love Me and yeah. Kelly uh, Kelly. Kelly, Kelly. Kelly. Two years later, she came back on a Pepsi can. I said, hey, yeah. you don't blue. <laughs> <laughs> then after that one, um, I was in a relationship with a Destiny's Child yeah. called I Michelle know. Williams. I know. And she was, it was weird because she was like, yo, I'm going to Nigeria to sing the national anthem yeah. at a Redeemed Church. Yeah. I said, well, when you get there, I was just being... Playful. I was like, I was more so... Like, Encouraging us, so when you get there, do this and let them know you're part, you know the culture. Say, when Jesus says, yes, nobody, nobody can say no. On. And they put the microphone yeah. out and be like, when Jesus says, yes, nobody. She looked at me like, eh? that's, a, that's a hit, bro. What's that? I said, that's an old African name. It's like a Negro spiritual yeah. to you. It's like our own <laughs> encouragement, you know. She was like, please, 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 please make this song for me. Eh? Make Afro song beats. for you, okay? And then it was like, God was like, and your opportunity presents itself. Again. And so I, I went in the studio, made the song, wrote and produced the song. She called Beyonce, and she called Kelly, Kelly, and the rest is history. Gang, so you yeah. wrote that song? Yes, ma'am. What a shocker, bro. <laughs> Pu publishing. So, so wait, the first way. So Go register. What's your register? Oh, 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 that, but here's the funny thing is, I, you know, it's funny because uh, my manager would always say, Kabal would always say, when people hear this story, they're going to be amazed. Yeah. And I was like, are you sure? I don't think it, that. No, I that always thought people knew. People, people so when, you got, when, you made, when you produced and you wrote the song, were you guys dating? Yeah. So the first time I heard that song, the first thing I said is, where did Michelle Williams hear this song <laughs> from? I'm not even joking. My first reaction is, this girl met a Nigerian man. <laughs> and no, I'm not for real? Like, the first time I heard like that song. Like because for Nigeria. you to know when, when Jesus said, it's not something you hear. Like, and at the time she did the song, like we, you know we spoke about the evolution of church. Yeah, 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 yeah. There are certain songs that you hear back in the yeah, day from Christians. Yeah, yeah. You know Christians. Nigerian church. You know that this person grew up like Ijile yeah, Christian. Yeah, yeah. Now, like Christians and like um, gospel artists yeah. sing very... Uh, Poor songs. Do you understand? They don't do all those things. Yeah. So I'm, I'm like, this girl met a Nigerian yeah. man. And, 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 and here is the Nigerian and this, man. And this Nigerian man also, you have to remember, this Nigerian man also played for Sonny Ngokoso as a child. Oh, really? Ooh. When he came to London and he taught, I was his drummer for a while. You've done everything. So You've lived a life. I've You've lived. actually lived a very... I've lived. A very fulfilling very life. Very eventful life. I've definitely lived. You have. That, now that song makes sense. What interests you right now? To see my country grow. Really? To see... Nigeria. Yeah. Mm. To see my country Amen, grow. No. To see my youngsters be as successful as I am. Um to let them know that my story is their story and they can do it. I faced the parents, I faced the family, I faced the rejection, I faced the poverty, mm. uh, I faced the trials and tribulations and they can make it. And I think God wanted me to see the country for myself. Um, and it didn't discourage me, it actually encouraged me more to really kind of like dig in and be like, all right, well, it's time. It's time for these kids to uh, take over. And live a better life than you did, and and, and so. you know, in our conversation so far, you've spoken about like right now when Tony asked you this, you're very particular about seeing young people grow. Yeah. You literally spoke about mentoring this young man yeah. that randomly met you on Instagram. Yeah. I think that 
the importance, the culture of mentorship has somehow died. I feel like a lot of times... Read. I think it has reduced drastically. And Read. I also think that a lot of young men mm -hmm. do not necessarily have a lot of mentors. Yeah, I didn't have much. And I up. think that that dynamics is kind of like that dynamics yeah. is really affecting like the entire. I didn't, I didn't have much growing up, so I needed. So I always said, when I make, I'm gonna be one. Because I didn't you, have one. What do you think about young men and mentorship? What do you think about the importance and the role of mentorship when it comes to like the young men growing we need up? It. We need it. If we don't have it, we're gonna fail. Um, huh. Your album. Yes, sir. <laughs> I've heard two songs. Bangers. Sweet girl. Bangers. Tick, tick, tick. Bangers. Yes, sir. Go right? Ahead. Tick, tick, tick is going to... And the version you just showed me, mm -hmm. just that played. one is going to be incredible. Yeah, the Fuji like, version. The... <laughs> is it Fuji or Tukba? I don't know. You might have to tell me I when you hear it from. I think it's a little bit of it. Yeah, a little bit of yeah. But the person has... The... Anyway, who are the features on this album? Do you have uh, songs? I know Rotimi's on it. Yeah. We're working on Ricardo, Tiwa... Uh, Seven Streeter, Eric Bellinger, oh. CB, uh, Tank. There's so many different. Janet. Wow. Like, Janet Jackson. Yeah. <laughs> Flex. Sorry, which ja you just said Janet so Jackson, nigga. So casually, like, yeah. she's your next door neighbor. Well, we share the same birthday, so. So when I worked with her on a project, it was, she made me feel very safe. Hmm. You know what I mean? When you work with an icon like that, yeah, who's probably had number one across the globe a hundred times, it's very yeah, difficult. Yeah, she had most number one at some point. Yeah. yeah. Kind of. And she's so so soft-spoken. She made me very safe and uh, gave me the opportunity of a lifetime to help her on a record called Made For Now with yeah. Daddy Yankee. Yeah. So yeah. that was another day. That was another time I got to like, let me just put my... And, uh, you know, and once again, no one knows I did it, but yeah. When does the album drop? First single drops June twelfth. You should, you want to listen to that? So featuring Ricardo Banks. Yeah. yeah. But I mean, stop trying to sing, please. I beg. I can sing more than you, bro. The next. Um, okay. So I think the album itself is gonna drop twenty twenty five. Oh. Oh. Yeah. Top 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 of twenty five. Okay. But we got some big songs we're dropping in between three or four singles to kind of set the tone. So people, like I said, I'm introducing myself. So I want people to. You're not introducing yourself. No, really. Yes, <laughs> if you walk yeah. Jenna Jackson, yeah. like, you are I don't have. Like, how are you? <laughs> I'm them? sorry. I mean, I like the humility, <laughs> but, but that ain't happening. <laughs> um, guys, thank you so much for for for. for thank for, you so uh, much. Are we done? Yeah. Yes. <laughs> yes. Things are happening. Just one last question. Oh yeah, go. go ahead. One last question. This album, why are you dropping this album? Um, That's a good question. I think one of the things that uh, I want, I, I said, God, what can I, who can I be and what can I be? Because I always wondered why I was born in London, but yet I know so much about my culture mm -hmm. and why he allowed me to live in America for the damn near the same amount of years I lived in London. And I realized I'm, I'm the bridge. Like, I'm a bridge for... That's your purpose. To bridge gaps. So this album is a reflection of being a bridge between all these cultures, the diaspora, Nigeria, Africa, and just being able to, you know, cultivate and put us in, and put us in position, give us the opportunity, and allow us to collaborate in ways we've never done before. What is the story of that scan, this guy? Oh, <laughs> well, what did you ask him? What well, scar? So, this scar, this scar, these scars, I, I played a lot of basketball. So, oh. I tore these in, uh, in basketball games. Yeah. But this scar was a life changing uh, experience. When I was 13 years old, I had a car accident. Oh, wow. And I died on the spot. And uh, I was pr pretty much pronounced dead. And my parents thought I was dead too because they were told I was dead. Um, that experience was crazy because I was crossing the road and a car swerved around the bus and then I was in the middle of the road. This was just, you know, going at a very, very high speed. So uh, that was a life-changing experience because in that experience, what I thought was sleep or slumber, uh, I heard God say, it's not your time. And that was the first time I heard God's voice like clear, like it's not your time. What did it sound like? It sounded like a, like a voice. <laughs> 
So I like it. So, yeah, God is a man. What is the title? Sorry. He's a spirit, anyway. Not man, spirit. What is it's the title? like of a your... man's voice. <laughs> What's the title of your album? It's called Fro and B, which is Afro beats and R and B merged together. So Fro and B. Yes, man. Fro and B. R and B. R and B. Fro and, Afro and B. B. Ooh. Makes sense. Because the rhythm is Afro. Yeah. Essentially. Essentially. Oh. So you when I when you hear the album, you're gonna hear it feels like uh, there's a lot of R and B essence, but there's a lot of Afro B essence. Tick tick. And and there's even other cultures, there's hip hop. There's yeah. the cultures, there's Latina America, yeah. cult, cultural, you know. Uh, I'm just trying to create this gumbo pot and just allow people to enjoy music and, and come together. I feel like not to end so bad. No, 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 listen. The problem is, I, I would like for us to, go, to have gone four hours because in the middle, we would have yeah, that this, pocket that we were in the middle, yeah, there's some would have, we ah. would have kept going. It would have like been two hours hour. for sure. Yeah, so it's fine. Um, maybe next time you're going to come around again. Listen. I'm home, man. Okay. You guys have made me feel like I'm home. Thank you. Thank you, I, you can have me whenever you want. Thank, thank you. Thank you, thank you very for much coming. For having us. Definitely yeah. enjoyed having this conversation. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you, bro. Much better than I. Much, much, much better than I. It was so hope. nice to meet you. I mean, we're, we're thinking. This is a very interesting. I mean, thank you. Yeah. yeah. Thank you very much. Yeah. <laughs> See you soon. <laughs> Um, ladies and gentlemen, thank ladies you for another gentlemen. episode of the Zero Conditions podcast. Thank you for rocking with us. Um, if you're, if you're watching live, thank you for doing that. Follow Amani Samuels on all social media platforms. Yep. Follow him everywhere. This man, legend, bro. If you're hedge money, that's Actually. it. And most, for, most importantly, the episode comes out on Monday on our streaming platforms, on our podcast platforms. Mm -hmm. Catch it there. This episode was brought to you by Shivers Rigo. Buy yourself a bottle of XP. Thank you. And do much. not forget to go check out the song. Buy H Money. Tick, tick, tick. Please don't forget to check out Pop Central and please check out the song by check H out Money. The sponsorship, definitely. Love. <laughs> Send love to the sponsors. Check out, check, check out the song, tick, tick, tick. Yes, you should check but it out. That song is a banger, bro. Trust me. Yeah. Trust me when I tell you.